If you're going to beat the Dallas Cowboys, you've got to find a way to stop Tony Dorsett. Trouble is, few of any teams are ever able to cope with this brilliant runner who is off to a simply tremendous start this season. And then, if you're going to beat the Dallas Cowboys, you've got to find a way to handle their fearsome front four, led by one of the extraordinary players in the game, Randy White. But if you're going to beat the New England Patriots, a team still loaded with fine personnel, then you've got the problem of dealing with one of the most punishing linebackers in football, Steve Nelson. And the Pats, they have two quarterbacks, either one of whom can be very effective on a given occasion. Grogan, for instance, will often throw to the successor to Russ Francis, the huge tight end, Don Hasselbeck, while Kavanaugh likes to use the speed of his wide receivers. And in that case, he did just that. Throwing to Harold Jackson, still a great one. Tonight, the Cowboys against the Pats. Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. ABC's Monday Night Football, the Dallas Cowboys against the New England Patriots. A well-oiled machine, except Tony Dorsett is playing perhaps the best football of his entire life. Tom Landry doesn't leave much unthought about. He never has over his career. Don Meredith can tell you a lot about that. And one of the men who's been the architect of this Dallas Cowboy team is his special assistant, Ermel Allen, in charge of development and all kinds of statistics to matters. And anytime Tom wants some information, he goes to Ermel Allen. And right now, Don Meredith is with him. Thank you a lot, Frank, and I am with Ermel Allen, who's an old pal of mine. You were my backfield coach. And Ermel, you're up here in the booth during the game. Basically, what do you guys do and how are you trying to put this information together where you can get it down to the, to the club? Well, when we're on offense, we look at every defense they use, the line defense and the coverage, and we chart it. And then uh, when they're on offense, we chart every play that they run, every pass or run on formation sheets. Herman, I know you see a lot of information, look at a lot of film. Your job is evaluating personnel, not only for your club, but for the clubs that you play. Coming here in New England, they've got good personnel. We've heard about that for a long time. How do you think that New England will try to attack you, Dallas's defense? Don, I really think that they're going to try to run wide, number one. And then secondly, I believe that they will attack our young secondary. Uh, good. Got you, great personnel, and I believe that's the way they go about it. You've got some of those. How do you think, then, uh, this is turning around. How are you guys going to attack their defense? Well, actually, our, our philosophy doesn't change. We use a multiple formation set, a lot of movement, and we've got to attack their man-to-man -man coverage because they use 50% man-to-man on passing down, which is extremely high for any team, Don. All right, Coach, they're out there. Let's get it going. Frank, you take it away, and we're going to have a good ball game. All right, Tom, and they, we already know anytime you're trying to cover the wide receivers of Dallas man-to-man, -man, Butch Johnson, Tony Hill, Drew Pearson, you're in a whole lot of deep trouble. The Patriots in deep trouble on their season already. They're 0-2, and, of course, Miami in their division off to a great start. They're 3-0. John Smith will get the proceedings underway for New England, set to kick off. And now it's Mike Rubach is out there. And James Jones, who has had a full groin in preseason, has just returned one kickoff this season, is back deep. Last year was the prime return man for the Cowboys, who have not been noted over the years as a great special unit team on kick returns. Kubash. Not a good kick. Flag is down. As Jones bobbles the ball at the 12 yard line, hustles to it. And it was not a flag, it was just a yellow piece of cloth that had blown onto the field on a beautiful night for football in Foxborough. Temperature 59 degrees. Howard told you, sellout crowd has been that way for some time. And there's no question the Cowboys are the NFL draw. All right, quickly we'll get a chance to see what Irma Allen talked about with Don Meredith, the point to that interview, to set a kind of storyline for you, and it was done very effectively. Let's see how quickly Danny White goes at the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And we'll tell you, too, about the offensive line changes for the Cowboys. If you're very familiar with this club, it is different. Ron Springs, piled up, line of scrimmage. 
maybe even lost a yard. It'll be second down and 11, and the offensive changes are with an injury to the regular starting center, Robert Shaw. We will have Tom Rafferty at center. Kurt Peterson, a second-year man out of Missouri that Cowboys are really high on, will be at right guard. He wears number 65. And Jim Cooper, who filled in at center a week ago, has moved back to right tackle. Jim Cooper, a very fine offensive blocking tackle, back where he belongs. Tony Hill, Butch Johnson, Drew Pearson, the three wide receivers in for the Cowboys. Play is stopped with the whistle just before the snap. Something was thrown out onto the field, and now it is being removed. One of the astonishing things I found today, spending the day as I did with the Patriots, is their confidence against this team. Now, they're going to have to prove it on the field, but they know their personnel is far better than their current record. What they really must do is stop the running game of Dallas. It's been sensational. They have a good blocking offensive line. The Patriots have thus far in two games become the weakest team in the NFL against the run, and you better believe that Tom took note of it as he prepared for this game. We will see a lot of Tony Dorsett and a young man who's really coming on, Ron Springs. There he is, Tony Dorsett. Right side, short of the first down, out near the 25-yard line by about two yards, tackled there by Mike Hawkins. Number 59 for the New England Patriots. There he is. They really would like to have Larry McGrew in there, but he's out with knee surgery. It's a good look at a big hole. You got Ron Springs is leading the way up in there. I don't know whether you noticed that stat on Dorsey a while ago, but 7.1 is an average per carry. That's an almost an amazing. It is huge. Thing. Yeah. And they're going against the 34 defense. Third down and two. Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end, split to the right and out of the shotgun. Danny White, a lot of confidence, throws it out into the flat to Ron Springs. He is taken out there, and it will not be a Cowboy first down. Good defensive play. Don Blackman out there. You can help from Ray Claiborne. You can see him, Frank. They're all hopped up. They're looking like a George Allen team just before an Allen defeat. <laughs> I'll never forget the way the Redskins what? came out against Miami for the Super Bowl. Wait a they minute. jumped all over one another. And Burt Reynolds was with me, and he said, they're going to kill Miami. <laughs> they never laid a glove on them. Uh, I see. <laughs> Roland James, you had a quick look. For the Patriots at his own 30, Danny White who doubles in brass for the Cowboys, says he doesn't mind. Tom would like to have him out of there. But Danny kind of likes to punt, and he gets a high, towering, booming kick that will freeze Roland James with the fair catch at the New England Patriots 32-yard line, where out will come the offensive units of a very charged New England Patriot unit, led by Matt Cavanaugh. We've already talked to you about Matt Cavanaugh. He came in last week against the Eagles. He didn't have any better luck than... Steve Grogan did in the first half. Kavanaugh had two interceptions. Grogan had had three. But two of Grogan's interceptions occurred just as he was being hit by Eagle defenders. First down and ten. The Patriots just out of their own 31-yard line. Here's Kavanaugh in his fourth year. Of course, out of Pittsburgh. Jackson is split left. Stanley Morgan in the lineup. Kavanaugh, his first shot. Goes out to Harold Jackson. Harold Jackson, second reception of the season. That's hard to believe that they have not hit their wide receivers as this New England team in the first two games. But as we pointed out in our opening tonight, Frank, it's Kavanaugh who likes to use those wide receivers, and tonight they've got number 86 back, Stanley Morgan, one of the very best in the business. Look at those people. Now, Michael Downs is very young, out of Rice, a rookie, and the hopes for him are very high in the Dallas team. And, of course, he's coming off a full hamstring in the very first game. He's back in the lineup, and that is questionable how long he'll be able to stay in there. Measurement from the reverse side of the field with a camera across the field showing you how close, and it will be brought out. Second down, just inches to go, and we spoke of Stanley Morgan, and both Grogan and Kavanaugh have not had Stanley Morgan, their best receiver, in the first two games. They have not, of course, had Russ Francis, who retired before the season. Their leading runner a year ago, Vegas Ferguson, has not been available, so maybe you can defend the lack of offensive punch by this unit just from loss of personnel. Well, Dandy, I don't think Vegas is going to get a lot of work because Tony Collins is taking over the rookie. That's what the coaches were telling us. They think he's terrific. He's got in there. I'm sure if Vegas were healthy, though, they, it's like 
Uh, Ermel was saying to me earlier, he said he thinks that really Dallas may have advantage in overall depth. And that's the situation. If you've got Vegas, uh, Vegas Ferguson not healthy, that could hurt. You know, so what if something happens to Collins? Single set book is Calhoun. Second inches. Jackson to motion. Calhoun, easy first down. He's driven back. Michael Downs coming up from his safety position to make the stop, but he's well over the line of scrimmage. And that, of course, what what he needed for the first. You've seen Calhoun through all the years. Often we've identified him, Frank, as an in-betweener. Not big enough for a fullback, and yet too big, really, and not swift enough for a, a tailback. And still, he makes it work. He puts things together. Ron Earhart, the leaguer. From the New England 43 on first and 10, Kavanaugh. Fires a good shot under heavy pressure. It goes out to Stanley Morgan working against Steve Wilson. Stanley Morgan, Howard spoke to you a moment ago. He's been out for the last preseason game, the first two season games, and he is wearing a knee brace on his left knee. I think this is a thing that uh, the Cowboys expected, but you know, you can expect it. You still got to stop it. And uh, I think Stanley Morgan's sheer presence does make a big deal. He had. That time he had Wilson turning and running deep, and you turn those things off, he's wide open. Not particularly good cover coverage that time. He has great speed. You have to respect it if you're a cornerback. That time Wilson was in single coverage. First down and 10. The ball near the 40 yard line of the Cowboys. Jackson, top of your screen. Tony Collins. The rookie second round draft pick out of East Carolina, taken there by Charlie Waters from the secondary of the Cowboys. Maybe a yard pickup, it'll be second down and nine. One thing I'd never do against Dallas with their flex defense geared for the run. Don't run on them in first or second down. Pass on. It's the only way you got a shot against this team. Not a bad record. Tom Landry, the third winningest coach in the history of this game. Not only that, he's got a new hat. 14 times in the playoffs out of the last 15 years. Remarkable record. Second and nine. Collins, right side. Good coverage that time. Charlie Waters coming up. Good pursuit down the line with uh, too tall, I guess it was. Coming in from the inside. Pretty good defensive coverage. He ain't of maybe a yard. But that's proof of why you don't run against this team on first and second down. They're geared for the run. They have every angle using the flex defense, a yard or two off the line of scrimmage, two of the four, and you just don't do it. And that was a mistake right there, the last two plays. Third down. And nine. Tough situation. Cowboys, six defensive backs in. Frank, they've got the five down linemen. Kavanaugh out of the shotgun, going deep. It'll be picked off by Everson Walls. There's one of your rookies from Grambling. And Walls returns it out close to the 25-yard line. And here is a youngster that led the nation interceptions a year ago at Grambling. He was not drafted. The Cowboys, as they always were, are always around these good well, players. They know all about him. I'm sorry, Frank. You have to wonder how Everson Walls was a free agent. Everybody knows the history of Grambling University. And this kid, in every pre in the last three preseason games, had an intercept in each game. He had an in intercept in the opening game of the season. And in the second game, he had a clear intercept, and the receiver stole the ball from him. So Everson Walls turns it around, and the Cowboys will have the first down and 10. The ball at their own 25-yard line when we come back. No score from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Jay Saldi in the lineup. First down and 10 for the Cowboys. Hugh Pearson up at the top of your screen. Inside handoff. Ron Springs. Yeah, gaping opening. And Springs out of the 35. Or close to that as they mark it now. Inside the 35. Very close to a Cowboy first down. Ray Claiborne tripped him up. That kid has the capacity to be a great player, Don. A track star at Ohio State, overlooked in the draft, but not by Gil Brandt. There's Steve Grogan in a Terry Bradshaw posture, but not with Bradshaw's record. <laughs> First down and 10. <laughs> Springs and Dorsett. The two setbacks back into the eye formation. The inside handoff. Springs once again, another opening behind Herbert Scott and Tom Rafferty. 
gain of three. You know, I, I hear these guys that say, oh, he, he runs a 4, 5, 40, or he runs it. That's hard to relate to. You know, I don't know what, what does that really mean. I, I asked Al Lavin, who's the, the coach of the running back, I said, Al, how far does Tony Dorsett run, outrun Springs on a 40? He says, not even a yard. Springs was so a Springs has got that same kind yeah. of speed. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's also fast. One second down. Danny White, play action. Finds the open man, Ron Springs, did not hold on. So it'll be third down and six for the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know. I don't believe in that 40-yard speed test. Giffa was never the fastest man on the field, but... I never saw anybody do more things, really. There, proclaimed five years late by Sports Illustrated as the greatest lineman in the game. Everybody knew it for five years. John Hannon. I thought you were talking about Gifford. Wait a minute, I was about to tell the Gifford story. I thought Wait a I missed something. Well, the Gifford was, he could do it all, and he didn't have the speed. Oh, okay. On third and six, out of the shotgun. Danny White, right on target. Tony Dorsett has the first down up at the 47-yard line. You saw a blitz of safety man that time. Nothing really, I guess, causes more. Uh, we'll take another look. Coming back in the middle. You see a uh, safety blitz. That's Roland James coming, the fifth back that comes in. Well, they blitz the safety with no results. That's really a very depressing thing for a defense to go into. They say, hey, we've got this thing sacked. We're going to throw a safety at you. And Tony, be able to get it off the doors and pick up a first down. That makes him think about that particular defensive move. Tony, not only the leading rusher in the NFL coming into the night after two games, the leading receiver for the Cowboys, S.J. Saldi, Mr. Everything, number 87. Dorsett, look at that move. Bouncing off a of Patriot. When you tackle Dorsett, you better really stick him and use the arms or he'll be gone. Is that Mike right? Haynes finally settles things, but not until Dorsett has advanced to the 47 on New England. Rod showed, I think it was, and hit him back in behind the line of scrimmage, and that was a beautiful move, just roll off to the side. And Rod showed is an excellent tack, a tackler with great range. I was with the kid today. It's amazing the way his body has grown bigger and stronger. Must be eating well. He's eating well. There was a gain of seven, second down and three. Drew Pearson out to the right. right. Gets the blitz, but he gets the pass off beautifully to Ron Springs. Now, Danny paid for that one, but he did get it off. He did a little. Well, he's dumping off to the backs beautifully, exactly the way to handle it. You don't pick it up. As, as Armel did mention, they, this team does play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Of course, when you're going to blitz these linebackers, you see them coming right there. That automatically puts you into that man-to-man -man coverage. You didn't see Danny get hit after the throw, but you also see Rod Springs has got a good step on Steve Nelson out there. He talked about the speed of Springs. He has that. That time, running away from the perhaps the best linebacker on the ball club, Steve Nelson. The first down is near the 40-yard line of New England. Dallas, they show you so many formations. Springs. Ah. Another Dallas first down inside the 30. They're just chewing up the yardage, Don. There's a comment last year. They talk about, well, Ron Springs, they say, doesn't really like to block. And Ron says, wait a minute, I'm a running back, and I don't know of any real, you know, running, blocking is one of those kind of like playing center. You never do hear from them too much. But he and, and Tony Dorsett have gotten this thing worked out where they're blocking very well for each other. That time you saw Dorsett go in motion, then lead the block downfield. He didn't throw a devastating block, but he did at least occupy that cornerback. Blocker is somewhat like Paul Revere's horse. Right. Who knows Paul Revere's <laughs> horse's name? On first and ten. 28-yard line. White to the air again. Quickly to Springs. We'll see a clip as Billy Joe Dupree was doubling back, and what a wasted penalty this will be. There was no question that would be a clip. Yeah, Billy Joe just got out of step, as he'd say. Something happened. One of the interesting things... Yep. Is they're not picking up all of the rushing uh, defensive players right now. Every time somebody's loose, so White hasn't had much time to look over that defensive secondary. Jerry Markwright is the referee tonight. Here is the staff. All of the NFL officials, of course, busy in other professions. Number 89, offense, first down. 
Howard Glass. Billy Joe Dupree. The staff of Jerry Mark Wright. If you clip Billy Joe, you come over and stand by Tom for a while. Don't you know that? <laughs> Down <laughs> remains the same. Mark. Butch Johnson and Tony Hill is Andrew Pearson. Cowboys, if they hold up to form, will work on pieces of it. They won't go for all of it. That's Dorset set up in a good defensive play on the right side by Schoet, who had to be thinking pass when the Cowboys came with run. Good play. That's the kid we were talking about. The weight, it's not 215 anymore. It's more than that. That's a program rate. All right, you got also look to move. There's Julius Adams, number 85. He's coming in there. Schultz, the one that meets that blocker. You got a lot of help from that inside coming over the inside. Richard Bishop, number 64, the nose tackle. And that's the coordinated defense. If you're going to play the three down linemen, you've got to get a lot of coordination with those linebackers and those guys in pursuit. Second down, 26. Danny White back again. He'll feel the pressure. This time it was intended. Dorset with the screen. And Dorset back to the original line of scrimmage, close to the 28, where it'll be third and 10. Mike Haynes defensively. What a beautiful, graceful runner. He is in the running back position. What Lynn Swan is to the wide receiving position. That Absolute mean, grace, acrobatic, you know. Does that make him practically perfect? Yes. This is a practically perfect team, as a matter of fact. Danny White is practically perfect at the quarterback position, and Tony Dorsett is practically perfect at the outs. Look at that little move. Got to the outside. Dorsett out of the backfield. Ron Springs will be the single setback. The three wide receivers, Pearson, Dupree, Johnson, are all there. Third and 11. Danny White going deep into the end zone. And taken there with a beautiful oh. leaping catch by Butch, Butch Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> who has been in a battle for the starting honors with Tony Hill, and Butch has been great now for two weeks in a row. And that's what you call non-aggression in a defensive back. He had the play covered totally, and he stood there, and he let Butch steal it from him. Watch again. Total non-aggression. Well, he's one of the best to ever play this game at the cornerback. I, Mike Haynes. Mike Haynes thought he had himself an interception. He was sitting there waiting for it. Let's look again. Look at Mike Haynes, number 40. He's back in the end zone. Butch makes an adjustment right at the end of this pattern. That really is a spectacular adjustment. Watch him come in in front of Haynes, and that's an interception for a touchdown. Good move, Butch. Well, I don't care how great Haynes is. He blew that. <laughs> Raphael Septian for the conversion. The Cowboys had a first down and 26. They worked it back to a third and 10, and then Danny White threw a strike that Butch Johnson actually made the strike with a great leaping reception in the end zone. The Cowboys on top. Five nineteen remaining in the first quarter. Cowboys on the scoreboard first. They lead New England 7-0. Septian will kick it off. Tony Collins, the rookie from East Carolina, settled in about his two-yard line. Septian ordinarily doesn't kick it too deep. He'll get a little height on it. Hi, Collins settles in at the 10. Down goes Collins up at the 21 yard line, hustling down Kurt Peterson, who made a start tonight at right guard for the Cowboys. And a man to be watched for the long term future, Kurt Peterson, out of the University of Missouri, where he's the defensive lineman. Now, on offense, according to the Cowboy coaches, he is probably the most developing player on the club. New England had moved the ball well on their first drive before the interception by Everson Walls of a Matt Cavanaugh pass. Matt Cavanaugh again, the quarterback. Having replaced Steve Grogan in the starting role tonight. Here's Calhoun. Calhoun with a fine attempt out over the 25-yard line to the 26. Pick up a five. It'll be second and five. Bob Bruni defensively. We might point out the Cowboys are not are playing without Mike Hegman at left linebacker Guy Brown, a great athlete, number 59 is in there. The Cowboys think he has potential to become an all-pro. He's had little injuries that have bothered him over the past four years. He has a great opportunity. Second and five, Kavanaugh. Uh, intended for our Harold Jackson. Steve Wilson defensively, the ball with no zip. 
Wilson came in there and made a pretty good move that time from his cornerback position. Played him pretty well. He had a step. Ball could have been thrown up a little bit more. That's the point. Yeah. Frank said no zip, which is true, but he didn't have touch either. Third down, a little more than four to go. The ball just over the 26-yard line. Especially teams that you see now with all ball clubs coming in on the pass situation. Frank, this is kind of an interesting situation again. You got those five, five down linemen, and Anthony Dickerson is extremely gifted athlete. Kavanaugh going deep, hustled back, wide open. First him down, down at the 35-yard line. Dennis Thurman defensively for the Cowboys, but with six defensive backs. Thurman was all alone with Hasselbeck. Makes you wonder how it gets open, doesn't he? Because they've really got him. they got five linemen coming. There's Dutton coming in there pretty good. He just turned him around out there. Somebody made a mistake. And that's Dennis Thurman, number 32, that came in. Now, this is the reverse angle from the other side of the field. Same picture. You see Thurman, number 32. We didn't see him get turned around, but he did get turned around a little bit. Hasselbeck made a pretty good move to the outside. Thurman closed pretty close, pretty fast, and knocked him out of bounds, but not until he made a first down, a big first down. Well, Hasselbeck like. has that great speed. He has height at 6'7", and he can get deep on you surprisingly quickly. First down, 10. Calhoun, left side, inside the 30. Nice pickup. Six or seven yards. Two series in a row. They've run against the flex on first down and made it work each time. Calhoun. I'll give him credit for that. Well, we got word down to Earhart. He said if we told him if you're going to run on first down for him to pick up more yardage because <laughs> running on first down, we've got that. Randy White missed him in the backfield that time. You may have seen a Cal Dallas Cowboy come in there close and get a hand on him back in the backfield. That was Randy White, the guy that you always have to contend with up in the middle of that line. He didn't make him and didn't tackle him, and D.D. White did. New England has called timeout. Confusion on the field. Matt Cavanaugh will drift over to the sidelines, visit with the coaching staff, and we'll be back in a moment. National Security Advisor Richard Allen defends AWAC sale tonight on Nightline. And note carefully, a special time, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 5 o'clock Pacific, the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship, Matthew Saad Muhammad, the WBC Light Heavyweight Champion, Jerry Martin, the number three ranked WBC contender, the North American Champion, plus the Fifth Avenue Mile. That should really be something. That'll be live except on the West Coast, featuring Steve Obet, the world record holder in the 1,500 meters as they run down Fifth Avenue, a straight mile. Out of sight. Steve Obet. Second down and four for New England. They've moved the ball well. Jackson in motion. Tony Collins, left side, another big gaping hole as Bob Brunig had to make the save. D.D. Lewis knows that that's really his job to contain that. He came in, met a pretty good block head on. That was Don Calhoun who threw the block. There's a young man down to the Super in three. We saw him in the final preseason game against Washington. Tony Collins, I'm referring to. They got him in the second round as a second round pick, but he can do everything. Good, good acceleration that time through the hole. He moved very quickly there. Again, the leading rusher for New England, unavailable, Vegas Ferguson. They say he has a sore ankle and is ready to play tonight. On first down. Kavanaugh with a lot of time. A man is wide open. Hasselbeck. Again, Steve Wilson playing way off Hasselbeck at this point. And Hasselbeck has a first and goal to go inside the 10. How do you get out, out there so open? He started in the backfield, went in motion so New many times. New England's famous for its tight ends, the ability to go short and yet to go deep. He succeeded Russ Francis. A lot of people speculated up here in New England that part of the reason, as you look at that replay, for Francis's holdout was to enable Hasselbeck to get more money. Not true. Francis wound up retiring. First down goal to go. Nosey Tatupu. Down around the five-yard line. That kid's a player from your school, Frank, USC. Mosey Tatupu. All week long because of the injury to Wilbert Montgomery, I learned today that the Eagles have been calling Bucko Kilroy trying to get Mosey Tatupu, and the Pats won't let him go. Montgomery may be out four weeks. We might also mention that Sam Cunningham has been working out with the ball club. 
He has not been activated. He, of course, missed all of last year. Big bruising fullback for New England. The second down and goal to go. Calhoun. Touchdown. Good move by Good Calhoun. Move. Out to the outside when nothing was doing in the middle of the line. An interesting offensive set that time. Two wide receivers way out left. Bull Dallas's defense. Calhoun saw the middle was blocked up. Bounced to the outside. Had enough speed to do it. Here's Calhoun. The play is designed to go straight. He made his little move to the outside. D.D. lost his footing. Went to the outside and scored. So two long drives. Dallas used up four minutes and two seconds. They went 75 yards. New England has now gone 79 yards in a little over three and a half minutes. John Smith for the conversion. Matt Cavanaugh, the holder. And we've got a tied football game. The Cowboys 2-0 oh on the season. New England 0-2. Oh and, and Don Calhoun has put them on the scoreboard. We'll be right back. Drive. Finally engineered by Matt Cavanaugh. And we've got a tied football game. John Smith set to kick it off. James Jones is deep for the Dallas Cowboys at the goal line. There he is. Strata, Mississippi State now in his second year. Lubash. And the ball goes into the end zone. Timmy Newsom is there as there was no communication between Newsom and James Jones. That ball could have been run back. Lack of communication within the organization causes screw-ups every time. I said that. At the 20-yard line following the touchback. Miami 3-0 in New England's division. Buffalo 2-1. Baltimore 1-2. They beat New England on the opening day of the season. New England, of course, 0-2. The Jets are 0-3. The NFC East, the division of the Cowboys. Philadelphia is 3-0. Dallas, of course, 2-0. The Giants 2-1. The three wide receivers. Hill, Johnson, Pearson in the lineup. Play action. White. Oh, good move. Tony Hill, who missed all of the preseason. Butch Johnson came in during the preseason, took the job. Butch Johnson doesn't want to give it back. And there's a little bit of feeling going on, if you listen to reports, between Tony Hill, Butch Johnson, and the man in the middle is Tom Landry. Tom will win, I'll guarantee you. I don't know that. what the deal is. Frank, that was a good example, uh, again, of, of what Ermel said. They, they, they put the three wide receivers in there, and they did get them in a man-to-man -man coverage, and they had... Rick Sanford isolated over that left quarterback. We're able to complete it in front of him for a first down. The first down is inside the 31-yard line of the Cowboys. Dorsett. Starting deep in the backfield. Looks it over. And he breaks out close to the 37-yard line. For a gain of six, it'll be second down and four. <laughs> Don with popcorn? I can't. No, that's surely not popcorn. The popcorn is shaking. That's it. Don's cutest of the group. There's no question about that. Getting back to Tony Hill, though, even though he was out during the preseason, he has a point in some respects. 120 receptions over the past two seasons. 2,000-yard years. He says, I belong in there. Dorsett. Oh, yeah. He does it so quickly. What a leg acceleration. You see him kind of get tackled there, a slow down, and just a little more spurt. Drag him in, pick up a first down. What I love about that guy is the way he runs inside, right up the middle. Take so a look quick. here. This is a three-man straight-ahead block. You've got Rafferty, who's the new That's Springs center that block on the and line. Look at Springs' block coming in, cleaning out the hole. That was a nice move. That's what they're doing real well, that combination block. First down and 10 inside the 46-yard line. Final seconds ticking off in the first quarter. Danny White going up on top. Tony Hill, the intended receiver, and nicely played by Rick Sanford, one of four number one draft picks that man the defensive secondary for New England. There is Rick in his third year out of South Carolina. Has worked at cornerback also. He played there last year when Mike Haynes was late coming into camp. Or actually into the season. Better at safety. Not really enough speed to be an efficient cornerback. We're going to find out tonight. I got a feeling. Tony Hill split to the right. That puts Butch Johnson 86, Drew Pearson 88, top of your screen. 
and we get the draw to Dorsett. He extends to the 50-yard line. That will end the first half. Game of or the first quarter. Game of four. It'll be third down and six. When we come back to Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Good football game. Stick around and enjoy. Chevrolet announces the biggest news ever in diesel power light duty Chevy trucks. The new 6.2 liter diesel available in all full size Chevy pickups, Suburbans and four wheel drive Blazers. It's a V8 built for trucks only. Everybody knows diesels get good mileage and more efficient than gas engines of comparable size. The new 6.2 liter diesel with so much going for it, it's bound to be popular. Don't wait. Order yours today. Chevy is the power in trucks. Gentlemen, gentlemen. This meeting is called to decide which one of us is the most popular light beer drinker of all. Must be talking about me. I vote for my buddy, Boog Powell. Oh. Should I take the minutes? You can take all year. Hey, I cast my vote for Billy Martin. I'll second that. Me too. Excuse me, this chart clearly shows what a little showing off can do. Now, wait a minute. I'm the most popular guy here. We <laughs> a little respect. At least we agree that light beer for Miller tastes great. Let's Let's Miller. Miller. Make a secret ballot. Could we vote for Red Auerbach? Please. What? I'm voting for me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Count the vote. <laughs> and that's no joke. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have a winner. Says here the winner is Bubba Smith. <laughs> I knew this was a bad idea. Lake Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Sixty-one thousand plus here at Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts, to watch an 0-2 New England team. That's a better football team than that. They lost to Baltimore, 29-28 in the opener. They lost to the Eagles, 13-3, in a game they could have won. And Dallas, of course, 2-0. They beat Washington and St. Louis in a pressive heat last week at Texas Stadium. Dallas has the football right at midfield, third down and six, and Danny White quickly into the shotgun. And Tony Hill again working against Sanford as the New England Patriots will send their men all over the field following designated receivers. Hill has the first down down near the 30 yard line. So far White has been brilliant. He has only had two misses. Start off with a very comfortable looking pocket for Danny White to throw in. There's a couple little moves there on the sideline. I mean on the move right in front of Sanford. He'll try to make him commit. He didn't commit. He just used his speed, natural ability to move into the inside. There's no help. Sanford couldn't catch up. Tom Landry, he will either signal the plays in with the help of John Makovic, a new coach, or he'll send it in via a receiver. First down and 10 for set in motion. This is Spring with a little screen in front. And well played defensively by New England. A gain of three. It'll be second down and seven, and we'll look at the stats from the first quarter. Okay. First down's about even. Yards rushing the edge to Dallas, passing the edge to New England. Total yards, not that much of a differential time of possession. Dallas, if there's one compelling factor so far, the Pats do not seem to be able defensively to contain the Cowboys. But then... The Cowboys have not been compelling in their efforts to contain the Pats. And let me guess, is the split score Johnson, tied? Johnson, Drew Pearson, or rather, Drew Pearson split to the left, and Billy Joe Dupree is tightened up on the right side. That's Butch Johnson. An interesting play and an interesting move by Dorsett. An interesting move is right, Frank. Pulled the... Was that uh, Butch Johnson that came in from the flanker? On, on, yes, he did. Uh, and he made a block, and that was nice. That was fun. Huh. They do so many things, and it really is tough to prepare for them defensively. You know, I Somewhere think... Somewhere in the course of a game, you'll break down as you try to cover everything they do. Raphael stepped in. Yes, indeed. Two steps to the left. Sure shot. A quick step. And boop. There it is. He's successful on his next field goal. He'll set a Cowboy record of eight straight. Yeah, seven for seven. That's not bad. Third down and five. Tony Hill split to the left. Butch Johnson, 86. Drew Pearson there at the top of your screen. Ron Springs is in a wing slot there. Wide open. Springs. He got it. First down at the 20-yard line. He, he got it. it. It's going to be close. 
They're looking it over. Springs knew where it was. He got the first down. First down, Cowboys. And that's a football game. Mixing it up with the pass and the run. And the Pats doing their best to put a rush on White, but not successful. 10 of 12, 96 yards is Danny White. He was passing at a little over 62% coming into the game. Second in the NFC. Dorsett just deep into the eye. And here he comes. Tripped up. Dorsett tripped up. Ray Hamilton moving across from the nose tackle position. There will be a loss of a yard. Sugar Bear was there that time. Made a good move. Sugar Bear or Honey Bear? Either one. He's a darling, whatever he is. <laughs> Ray Hamlin, look at him. Six foot one, 245 out of Oklahoma. Made a good move. They got Rafferty moved in at, at the offensive center position. We've talked about we've had injury. Robert Shaw moved in in place of Fitzgerald. That gives you a little indication of what Irma was talking about, the overall depth that Dallas feels they have, both offensively and defensively. This is the third center. Nick, Jim Cooper can also play center. 11th play of this drive. Second down and 11. Sally in motion. Clock ran down. Clock ran down on them. A little slow getting the play off. Get a shot of Tom, but you'll see somebody that's really happy. They had that trouble in their final preseason game. They've avoided it pretty much in Washington and St. Louis, but it's a new system for Tom. He used to send the plays in a year ago, of course, with receivers. Frank B. Number 11, offense. Oh, Danny, you didn't mean to. As most of us know, coming to and from this stadium can be a very difficult situation. There's a lot of congestion in the traffic and uh, the Cowboys were a little bit late in arriving and normalizes I was worried because Tom was smiling so I don't know what that means I didn't get here about an hour before the game second down 15 Drew Pearson top of your screen Saudi in motion Danny White Drew Pearson and he does not hold on that's the clutch play. they call him and this time, he cannot hold on in the end zone. It'll be third down and 15. Did you see the protection he had? He got good protection, and the ball's not really that, that poorly thrown, and Drew runs a pretty good route, so you got to look to us at why isn't it complete. That's pretty doggone good coverage. You look at Ray Claiborne, number 26. He's right there, and he's getting some pretty good help in a hurry from Tim Fox, number 48. Ray Claiborne is... Uh... Well, we may put on another Leonard uh, Hearns match. Ray Claiborne and Will McDonough of the Boston Globe. They had a set two last year, you'll remember, each claiming victory, but neither able to prove it. Third and 15, it'll be shotgun for Dallas. With the three wide receivers, gifted ones they are. running room but he pulls up after finding the receiver Drew Pearson uh -huh. struggles forward and Drew Pearson will get the first down uh, real credit goes there to Danny Danny White that's terrific staying there in pressure nobody was open from the shotgun situation you see the guards come in set for their position let me ask you a question Don would right. Roger have run in this situation I think Roger would have run that situation when he first came in but I don't think Roger would have run that situation the last few years he played and I think Danny White had the uh, advantage of watching Roger, as they say, grow wise with a few years. In the meantime, White's 11 out of 14, and he's having an absolutely brilliant night. First down, goal to go. The ball at the seven-yard line. This game tied up at seven. <laughs> Movement on the right side of the Cowboys line. You'll see the flags fly. Could have been Jim Cooper, the offensive right tackle. You got to go back in the huddle and say, okay, doesn't look like it, guys, but that's the break for us. We're down here in this below and inside the 10. It's hard to do. Give us another five yards. We can do a few more things out here outside the 10. Of course, that's a, maybe grasping for straws. It could be that New England will not take the penalty. Oftentimes, Frank, really, truly, it, it is so much more difficult down here. You've heard it explained so many times. You run out of field to work with. The defense can play a little bit more pressure kind of defense. Illegal motion, number 89, offense. Second Tight end, down. Billy Joe Dupree, illegally in motion. New England will let them keep first down. They want to move them back, which they do, to the 12-yard line. 10 50 remaining in the first half. Keith Lee, number 22, is in defensively in place of Ray Claiborne. Low and getting the ball off. Dorsett back 
inside the 10. Down around the 8-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Rick Sanford defensively there for New England. Tony Dorsett has become the third leading Cowboy rusher of all time and rapidly closing in on Calvin Hill. Coming into tonight, he needed 126 yards to replace Calvin Hill as the Cowboys' all-time receiver. And he's done it basically over a period of four years. Every season, 1,000 yards plus for Dorsett. No one had ever did that before. Second and goal. Drills a ball into the arms of Sally, and it is incomplete. Rick Sanford defensively there, as Sanford is being tested all over the field tonight. And Saldi is some test, one of the most underrated tight ends in football, because he's not the starting tight end. Another one of those free agents out of White Plains High School, Jay Saldi, went down to South Carolina. Cowboys just keep pulling them in. You know, though, Doug Cosby is the number two guy, and he was the one that was really closer to taking over from Billy Joe Dupree than it was Sally. So you've got three really good tight ends there, guys. Third down, goal to go. First set, single set back. Drew Pearson in motion. Right. First set, one hands it and then bothers it. And maybe wisely so, as Roland James would have put the hammer to Dorset. And now Raphael Septian comes onto the field. If he can convert, and it's not much more than a chip shot, he will set a new Cowboy record of having kicked eight consecutive field goals. Well, we saw Buffalo miss a chip shot last Thursday night, and that turned the game for the Eagles, so you can't count on anything. But even so, a very big series of downs for the Patriots, because finally, they did stop the Cowboys. Septian also has been playing throughout the three and the first two games with a full groin. Waters will hold. Rafferty's the center. 27-yard attempt. And Septian has set a new Cowboy mark of eight consecutive field goals. And the Cowboys move back out in front. They lead 10-7. We have 9.54 remaining in the half for Foxborough. New back in Foxborough. Set to kick off Raphael Septian. Tony Collins has dropped deep. He's back there because Horace Ivory, who led the NFL and returns a year ago, has a pulled hamstring. He can't go. But this youngster is explosive. Second round pick out of East Carolina, Tony Collins. One of the Cowboys' goals, as Meredith has pointed out, is to keep the kickoff return to about 23 yards. No further than the 28. Let's see if they do it. A little more than 23 yards. Just about. The key guys are. I want to remind you about Saturday. College football coming your way. Football regional action around the country starting at 12 o'clock Eastern. Boston College against North Carolina. Oregon State at Minnesota. Florida at Mississippi State. San Jose at California. That's a special time. 10.30 on the West Coast. And then the second half of that NCAA doubleheader after Wide World at a special time. A battle of the top two teams in college football. That's USC and Oklahoma with the great Marcus Allen at USC against Buster Rhymes and Stanley Wilson of Oklahoma. Check the local listing for the game in your area on first and ten. Kavanaugh fires out there to Harold Jackson. Jackson beats Steve Wilson. Very close to a first down. Point Don was making on the utilization of the special teams in Landry's goals is embellished by the fact that Kurt Peterson and Spradlin are the two key people, presumably, on that team. Right, Don? They're the guys that they like to have that wedge that comes down there and busts it open, as they say. You saw a good catch that time by Harold Jackson. Harold got 12 stitches in his chin, he showed me before the game from last week's game. I said, Harold, so how long are you going to play this stuff? They can't run you off. He said, as soon as my stitches heal, you won't know anything. I'm as good as new. Looks pretty good right now, doesn't it? There's your measurement as we take the shot from across the field. Jackson, of course, the man you're speaking of, Don, the leading receiver active in the NFL today with over four, 530 receptions. He He's really always is. there. That's the thing about Jackson. He caught four touchdowns against Dallas one time when he was with the Rams. One of the great days he's had for over 200 yards, I think it was, but four touchdown passes. 
It's second down and one. New England at their own 33. They're down by three points. Katufu. It's a New England first down. Out close to the 37-yard line. That offensive line really fired off the ball that time. All of them got off just at the right count, and they really moved it out there. Katufu comes out. Don Calhoun. Mr. Reliable. Not terribly exciting. But he is there, holds on to the football. Started all 16 games a year ago when Sam Cunningham set the year out. That is Don Calhoun, number 44. On first and 10, Jackson in motion. Play action by Kavanaugh. Hasselbeck is open again. And a beautiful shot. Hasselbeck thoroughly beat Charlie Waters. At one point, he had him by four or five yards, and Kavanaugh was right on target. I'll tell you, when you've got a tight end who can go deep like that, you've got some weapon. One of the things I think that confuses a team like Dallas is that offensive movement before the snap of the ball. You saw quite a bit of it then. The Cowboys were trying to adjust. Charlie Waters had two interceptions last week. He's lost a little speed. Here's a shot from the other side of the field. You see how wide or how wide open Hasselback is. Here's Charlie trying to catch up with it. Got that outstretched arm, just barely missed. Good offensive play that time. 43 yard pickup. New England driving again. Inside the 21 yard line of Dallas. Katupu. Slides away from one tackler. Big John Dutton gets down close to the 17 yard line. Guy Brown in there defensively for Dallas. Katupu may be the most spirited player on the New England team. This guy is really intense emotionally in every way. Andy Johnson, number 32, can do a lot of things for New England. He comes in as a setback. He also, as we look at Ron Earhart, the coach of the Patriots, Andy Johnson will also throw the ball. Now he's stripped to the left. The Tupu, the single setback. Kavanaugh, Harvey Martin is there. Good move Kavanaugh, by Kavanaugh gets the ball off to Johnson. Goodbye. Down and a great move by Kavanaugh. Harvey Martin was breathing all over him. They may have called him down back there, Frank. They may have said he was in the grasp of Harvey Martin. They give you a quick whistle now. That oh. started a year ago, and they're going to bring it back, and these fans are not going to like it. Not yeah. one bit. Can't say that I blame them. Neither can I. Rule was put in to make sure that the quarterbacks would have maximum protection. When you're in the grasp of the tackler, you're the same as down. I'm telling you, there's a good battle going on there in the middle. I just happened to notice with Randy White and John Hanna. <laughs> They've got him a good one going. Hanna's doing a good job right now. Well, it's going to test the character of New England. That's a very tough setback to take. Third down and 15. Jackson split up to the top of your screen. Out to the right is Stanley Morgan. Quick count. It's a reverse. Jackson's going to throw the ball. Oh, oh and that ball almost picked off by Dennis Thurman. It'll be fourth down. They ran that play on a fairly quick count, and Dallas was trying to get in all of these other players. They weren't really set for their uh, for the defense. Here's the play before, reverse angle. Let's take a look at it again. We can look for Harvey Martin to come in. Let's see what he does. There's big Harvey. He's in the grasp. Boy, that's uh, well, I must say, on the other replay, you saw the referee, Jerry Markbright. He was waving his hands. It was all over before Kavanaugh threw it. That's true. John this fellow, this now, fellow is not kicking well, Frank. He's Suddenly. Three, he's been hurting. That'll never there you it. go. John Smith, who led the league in scoring for the last two seasons, has missed once again for New England. He could have made a big difference in Philadelphia a week ago. The Cowboys have possession. Doug Wilson, our esteemed producer, perhaps. Who knows? <laughs> Frank Everett, Howard Cosell, Don Meredith, watching a good football game. The New England Patriots changing things up. Not a bad way to play, Dallas. Show them things that you haven't shown yeah. before. But they had the mark of a loser in that last series. First, the official's call was proper. Bringing the ball back on the apparent touchdown. Second, Smith continues not to be able to kick. Third, White Wheeler couldn't handle Harvey Martin. On first and ten, Dorsett. Look out. 
Look at it. This could be the distance. That's he gone. has great speed. He's gone. Tony does oh, 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 oh. 75 yard touchdown run, a brilliantly executed. Is that play. pretty? Great blocking at the line of scrimmage, and then Tony Dorsett just did his thing. Oh, my gosh. And to look at Ron Ahart as you look at the end zone replay again, reveals Ron to be the most intense and worried man. And I said they had the look of a loser on that last series, and this proved it. If ever a team has to show character, Look after the that. Box downfield. Great by their flankers, their outside receivers. Started off with a great block by Herb Scott, Frank 68. Then you had Drew Pearson out in front. And Butch Johnson. Yeah, Tony just stayed in there behind as Drew Pearson 88. That was a beautifully executed play. Seption in an attempt to extend the Dallas lead. Which he does. So suddenly the Cowboys are out in front 17 to 7. This man is very special in this game, Tony Dorsett. Welcome to the Buick School of Performing Arts and its most distinguished graduate, the Buick Riviera. With front wheel drive, four wheel independent suspension, almost every power assist imaginable, standard. And for power, a sophisticated V6 or optional V8 or diesel engine. Buick's Riviera, a real driver's education. Classes start at your Buick dealers now. Oh, Edna, the Toyota needs struts, brakes, and a new muffler. And if we can't get the car back by tonight, we can't go to your mother's for dinner. She'll never get all that done in one day. <laughs> if you want your foreign car fixed fast, get the Midas Stutch. Midas has foreign cars, struts, brakes, and mufflers in stock. I won't see my mother long for a week. <laughs> get the Midas Stutch. Nobody else has it. Hi, Mom. Starting September 30th, an outcry of freedom and desire. The Manions of America. Less than a half, and Tony Dorsett, who led the NFL after two games, now leads the NFL in rushing after three games. 8.1 average per carry. That 75 yards helped that one, didn't it? Utterly huge. Third longest run in Cowboy history. He has the longest at 84. Did I have the second longest? Do you have that book? Evidently not. And he has one of 77. And he now has one of 75. Tony Collins takes the kickoff of Septian. Collins piled up out around the 25-yard line by Everson Walls. Basically, they're meeting Landry's goals, the Dallas special team, on these kickoff returns. Uh, they want to keep them no further than the 28-yard line. And uh, believe me, that's all figured out. I don't know how they do all that sort of stuff. I yeah. love that new hat. Yeah, he's got a new hat. Well, he's very fashion conscious. Alicia, of course, helps him. Dallas leading 17-7. Matt Cavanaugh, who has performed well tonight. Back again. It's time going out to his wide receiver, Stanley Morgan, the intended receiver. Back there defensively, a man whom the Dallas Cowboy coaching staff will tell you makes things happen, Dennis Thurman. Now, Stanley, who's been out with an injury, can run the fly. He can run straight. He'll have a problem tonight. He's not fully recovered, trying to hook and curl. But right there, he should have had that. I've seen him even call interferences on plays like that. You saw Dennis try to reach his hand back in. The ball was a little bit underthrown. But Ed Jones was the big reason for that. He was all over Kavanaugh as he threw it. Two tight ends for New England on second down and 10. The rookie Lynn Dawson from North Carolina State is in there with Hasselbeck. They get the run call. Fumbles the ball, and Dallas oh, no. looks as though they have recovered. They can blow this game out of the top. Steve Wilson recovers for Dallas, and they'll have super field position, 30-yard line, inside the 30-yard line of New England. They can blow this game out right now. 6.35 to go in the second quarter. Two terrible mistakes by the New England Patriots. One with Mike Haynes standing there passively in the end zone as Butch Johnson stole the ball on what should have been an easy knockdown or intercept. And secondly, they were dispirited after they failed to score and Dorsett took advantage. 
Drew Pearson, 88. As we look at a single setback, Pearson now in motion. After they failed to score, and Dorsett took advantage. Drew Pearson, 88. As we look at a single setback, Pearson now in motion. Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett. Flag is down as Dorsett is through the 25-yard line. Richard Bishop upending Dorsett after a gain of three, but we are going to have a holding call. It works against Dallas. Five games, 16 days. We hope you've enjoyed them. That's what we've been bringing you here on ABC. And a week from tonight, Chicago. 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 And the Los Angeles Rams. In town. As the soap opera story continues to develop. Holding. Number 64, offense, first down. You know, I, is Tom Rafferty at center, and I speak of our travels. Well, our technicians and engineers have done a superb job moving all over the country. They're a little bit bleary-eyed, but they are the best. And we're happy and proud to be with them. First down and 20. Cowboys at New England's 38. Dorsett. This time, Dorsett trying to go outside is taken there by Mike Hawkins. That's a good move by Hawkins. Springs was the guy that was supposed to be blocking me out there. And Hawkins just made a real good move, and uh, Springs didn't even get a piece of it. Came right back around and got 20 for a loss. For the Pats to get back in this game, they've got to do two things. They've got to, that's Makovich, formerly of Wake Forest, who's feeding in signals there. I believe that is, isn't it, Frank? John Makovic. He yeah. is a first-year man from Wake Forest. And he gets the unenviable job of signaling Tom Plaza. Second and 23, and a flag is down. And all sides over here. Danny White. Deep in the end zone and out of the end zone. Hustling down there with Butch Johnson. But there was movement at the line. Things Drew Pearson on this side. If you're spread out that far, it's kind of difficult to hear that snap count. And I think he just moved a little early. Well, I'll decline this. What they've got to do with the Pats is show some character. They've got to pull together. Stop Illegal down. motion. Number 88. Offense declined. Third down. So it brings up third down in 23. Tough call. New England will be giving them some of it, but they also have to be thinking in terms of the field goal. And right out into the shotgun comes Dallas. Tony Hill up at the top of your screen. Middle screen, Ron Springs. Springs pursued and dropped at the 32-yard line, far short of the first down. Again, Ray Hamilton who has missed, missed a lot of action over the past three or four weeks with a sore right ankle, playing good football tonight. Well, that was somebody's man. Ron Springs, that's the middle screen. It, maybe it was Hamilton's man. They're either going to be a linebacker or one of those defensive linemen who've got to stay in that middle and watch for that screen. If Hamilton hadn't made a tackle, they could have possibly picked up even the first down. Danny White will be looking for the corner, and he's good at it. Roland James will try to guess with him. White angling the ball and catches the end zone. It'll be a touchback. So there will be a net gain of 12 yards as the ball will come back out to the 20. New England brings their offensive unit back onto the field, hoping to regroup. They leave 17 to 7, 450 remaining in the half. People demand a lot from a 35 millimeter camera. That's why thousands of Japanese have gone beyond ordinary automatic 35s to the Pentax ME Super. The ME Super is really two cameras. On manual, you use it like a professional camera. But on automatic, it's as easy to use as any 35. The Pentax ME Super. One reason we've sold more 35 SLR cameras than any other company in Japan. Or in the world. I'll tell you, we never realized golf was such a tough game. Hey, it's a lot easier hitting a quarterback than a little white ball. So us Linksters drink light beer from Miller. Not just because light tastes great, but because it's got a third less calories than a regular beer. And it's less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're out there trying to get birdies. Yeah, those things move awfully fast. <laughs>
Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. New England was 10 and 6 last year. Buffalo took the AFC East with an 11 and 5. The Cowboys were 12 and 4. They lost in a tiebreaker to Philadelphia. And they lost the NFC Championship to Philadelphia. First and 10, New England from their own 20 yard line. Tony Collins, right side. And Collins sprints out over the 25 yard line before Charlie Waters is there defensively. Well, there's baseball fever up here in Boston, isn't there? Oh, is there? They're going crazy at Fenway. 9-2, Boston killing Milwaukee. Detroit over Baltimore. Cleveland shutting out the suddenly slumping Yankees. Oakland, Toronto postponed. Minnesota, red hot in the second half, leading Kansas City. And Texas over Seattle, Chicago, California, latest start. Huh. That was good. Second down and four. <laughs> Katupu, big hole, Mosey, Mosey, Mosey really cracked Michael Downs and had a couple of extra yards out of it, but he already had, had the first down. They'll mark it up. Michael Downs the being yard new line. back there to begin with. He says, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to meet anybody coming back here this quick. Look at that straight up blocking on Randy White. That's Hannah. Randy White, as we've talked about many times, can't be too many people much better. Downs says, wait a minute, I'm just a rookie from Rice. What are you doing coming back and hitting me that hard? Downs is some rookie. He's going to be a star. He is. They have marked it at the 38-yard line. First down and 10. Collins. And Collins pursued and dropped by middle linebacker Bob Grunick. After a gain of four, it'll be second down and six. National League, Cubs, away from the Mets, shut out the Cubs. Look at that Philly-Montreal game. I'll tell you about Steve Galton later. He set a record tonight. Mets leading 2-1 to one in the seventh. And San Diego-Cincinnati later start. Second down and six. Matt Cavanaugh got the start tonight. There is a lot of question. John Earhart told us this morning that he would start. Steve Grogan physically all right. Neither one very productive in their first two losing efforts of the season. Great speed. They're playing with a knee brace that has kept him out of action, but you saw just a quick flash of a man over the past couple of years has just been sensational, a pro bowler the last two years. Reminiscent of an old teammate of mine, Bobby Hayes. Used to throw that ball out to Bobby and say, Bobby, look, we can't think of anything else to do. So I'm just going to throw it out there and do whatever you can. But watch this little move. A little quick fake into the line of scrimmage. Okay, Stanley Morgan, Bobby Hayes. Look at that move. Now, Thurman is a pretty good open field tackler. That's one of the things they said. Boy, he can get them in the open field. New England has the first down at the 45-yard line of Dallas. Kavanaugh <laughs> up again. Man is open. And taking the ball once again, Stanley Morgan. Kavanaugh is handling this team beautifully. As we approach the two-minute warning, he's doing the right thing. He must be patient. If you only get back a field goal, you're back in the game. New England has two timeouts remaining. We'll be right back. Two, hey, over here. Hey, 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 here. Yeah, yeah. Just come around here. Yeah. Hiya, Phil. Looks like we got here just in time. I'm well, glad to see you. Hop on in there. Okay. Oh, oh, hey, wait a minute. We don't have room for your TV. Uh, well, uh, uh, I guess I'll just have to wait for the next boat. There's only one television that people are absolutely crazy about. Trinitron, from Sony, the one and only. Clean water, more precious to life than oil. But it too is becoming scarce because of man's pollution. But now there's something that's helping to clean water all over the world. A unique wastewater treatment system made possible by this special plastic developed by Philips Petroleum. There are other energy sources besides oil, but there's no substitute for water. Caring for your car and more, that's performance from Phillips Petroleum. Of those 156 yards, 8 for 11 is Matt Cavanaugh. 93 of them have been on the part of Don Hasselbeck, the big tight end who has roamed around free all night. He has three receptions for 96. Two timeouts remaining. New England down 17 to 7. That is Kavanaugh. 
troubled as has Grogan been with knee problems over the past few years. As a matter of fact, he came in a surprisingly low draft pick because of a knee problem, missed his rookie season with knee surgery. Hasselbeck in motion. He's the big number 80. Kavanaugh going for Jackson and Jackson back there dueling with Wilson and a flag is down. They'll bring it up. Defensive pass interference. Wilson, Harold Jackson is a cagey receiver. He slowed down and let Wilson run up his back. Well, he wound up having it pretty well by himself, and you're right, he is a cagey receiver. Made a pretty good move. Wilson looks up now to see the ball, making his move toward the ball. He's coming over the shoulders, and that's restricting the offensive end receiver's ability to catch the ball. But he Which, kept his body yeah. between the ball and Wilson. Uh, Wilson right. had to play through him. That's right. His first down goal to go. This capacity crowd getting their share of excitement tonight. Calhoun sacked up by the big left side of the Cowboys. John Dutton, Ed Jones, Guy Brown. Bob Bruning all closing down. And look at the bottom of it. It's Charlie Waters from his defensive safety. Charlie makes a lot of tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Tell you this. New England has been resolute in this drive. That man's worried about his job. He's the most intense figure on the field. And they have been resolute. But now they've got to prove they can get that ball in there. At this point in time, while a field goal keeps them alive in the game, it's not what they want. They want more. Second down and goal, the ball's at the three. Collins, about seven. And the resolutely, they move into the end zone. They what a football, a football game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Tom Landry, I think, suspected they might be blown away when they came back and led 17 to seven. New England is not quitting. Again, a good move. We talk about that offensive line, but they stacked them up. Went to the right. Wilson, you see, has a shot at him. It doesn't hold on. That, they had Ed Jones pretty well trapped in on his side. That's Dutton there for the side of it. So they did a good job on the offensive right side of the line. That's Shelby Ryder Jordan, Jordan number yep. 74, did a well of a jump. So did Shelby, so did the Bob Kreider. John Smith. And Smith brings the Patriots to within three. We'll be returning to Foxborough with more football after this message from the National Football League. This is Tony Dorsett of the Dallas Cowboys with a lot of my friends from the youth agencies that your United Way support makes possible. But I wonder just how many of you know the United Way is working with young people and specialized local organizations. With your help, they're staying off the streets, learning the facts about drugs and alcohol. They're learning that it's more fun to be part of a team than part of a game. See you guys later! <laughs> she, she's beat me! Ah! Ah! Hey, These kids hey. are our future. They're our hope for a better tomorrow. But all of us have a responsibility to give them a chance. And we're doing that and more when we help them all through the United Way. He's a champion. This is Tony Dorsett reminding you that thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by Tony Dorsett and the National Football League and Tony Collins. This went off the right side. Good determined running. Second round draft pick out of East Carolina who is a leading rusher for the Patriots in the preseason. Kubach picks off for New England. Taken over there by Timmy Newsom. And Newsom battered and beaten around till he gets to the 30 and a flag is down. 103 on the clock remaining in the first half. The Cowboys have their full complement of three timeouts. And the Cowboys now will begin deep in their own territory. Timmy Newsom ran that kickoff back. I wish you folks could see more of him tonight. You won't because he's been hampered by injury. 
he is going to be a truly great running back out of Winston-Salem State, and he is the best back the Cowboys have coming out in the backfield. Of Illegal the use of the hands, number 51 on the run back, first down. Anthony Dickerson, a little eager for Dallas. The Cowboys now at their own 17-yard line. Cowboys leading 17 to 14. Tony Dorsett with an electrifying 75-yard touchdown run is the difference thus far. Dorsett deep in that eye formation, but he gets to the line of scrimmage so quickly. Dorsett springs is in front. Stepping out of bounds. Right at the first down marker, stopping the clock with 57 seconds. Rick Sanford was there to make sure defensively for New England. He's amazing. He can go 70, 80 on any play. How do you choke him down? He is six yards short of becoming the second leading all-time rusher for the Cowboys, replacing Calvin Hill. Averaging 10 yards a carry tonight. Oh. Yeah, he says, I'm just warming up. <laughs> Uh, the field you see they came up just a little bit short you're going to get Dallas up around the 30 they'll start thinking about trying to get in a position to at least get a field goal the reason when they ran on that first down they were back at their own end of the field they don't want anything to happen before the half that either turnovers where they would not go into the half ahead something like that <laughs> yeah they didn't want to do that They're protecting the lead thing with Dorsett you have a very special person back there he can turn the running play into a big gainer Send him outside. Cuts back against the grain. In great condition. Had a big game against St. Louis a week ago in 110 or 12 degree temperatures at Texas Stadium. Second down, you saw the inches needed. Out of the shotgun comes Dallas. And over the middle is open is Billy Joe Dupree, who now gets out over the 30 for the first down. Hurry up offense by Dallas. Danny White, very cool quarterback. He knows exactly where he is, his timeouts, and what is required. Hit his legs. I told you, and I believe New England's going to come up with the football. That was the thing they didn't want to happen. Mike Hawkins was there first. talking about? Well, you got to look right there to Rafferty. He's the new center. Julius Adams and Mike Hawkins were all over the football. 32 seconds remaining, and New England has a great opportunity to go in, at least tied in this game, and maybe with the lead. Well, we told you, uh, John Fitzgerald, the center, was hurt in training camp, the regular center. Robert Shaw is also out of the lineup. What we basically have is Rafferty, who has not played center for some time, working at the center spot for Dallas. Low snap, Danny White could not handle it. And New England in great field position. Inside the 19-yard line of Dallas. Draw play, Calhoun. Calhoun for a couple. Randy White was the man that slipped in there and pulled that one down. And New England will take time out. They have one remaining. I must say, Don, you call that. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Sometimes I come up with something. <laughs> That's that shotgun again. That's which the shotgun. Hawkinson doesn't like, and you do. Hawkins, the man that came in there and made that recovery. They were putting some pressure there, but obviously it was a real. I, I got you. That's right. Yep. There's hey, Matt Cavanaugh. And he had a replaced Grogan a year ago, and then he hurt his knee. Both of them have been troubled with knee problems throughout their careers. The fans, of course, cried for Kavanaugh over the past couple of years. They'd get Grogan, then they'd get Kavanaugh, then Kavanaugh would get hurt. Grogan would come back in. Very unsettled spot for New England, the quarterback. That's an interesting stat because Gossett has outrushed the entire New England team, and young Tony Collins from East Carolina has had himself a very effective night. And so is Calhoun for that night. It'll be second down and eight. And Kavanaugh brings them up. Morgan goes out to the left. He's the speed at the receiver. The clever one, split to the right, is Earl Jackson. Number 80, Hasselbeck, has been a real force in this half. 
Kavanaugh, deep drop, going for Harold Jackson. Good defensive play. Hold on, defensive play made by Steve Wilson. That was a good defensive play by Wilson that time. Came in, had better position than he did, obviously, when we saw him commit a little uh, pass interference earlier. Jackson again, very similar route to the one that interference was called. You saw that he did turn Wilson around. This time, Wilson makes a little bit move, a little bit more to the inside, didn't hit the body, got it with his head and knocked it away. Third down and eight, 20 seconds on the clock. One timeout remaining for New England. They trail 17-14. Pete Brock snaps for New England when they're in the shotgun, as they are right now. There he is, wide open. Wide open is Andy Johnson. He bobbles the ball, and he had possession. This will be a touchdown. <laughs> oh, no. oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> what a break. New England with a golden opportunity. Dennis Thurman oh. covered the fumble by Andy Johnson, and the Dallas Cowboys will have the ball at the 20-yard line. I don't 11 blame. seconds remaining in the half. I don't blame Ahot. He is either. probably near suicidal at this point. Well, I tell you, he has Johnson so wide open. It starts off, as we said again, really good protection. We might as well say that. Kavanaugh's moving around. Johnson comes back across the middle, wide open in there. That's Benny Barnes, 31. That jars it loose. He just didn't quite get it put away. And in the end zone, you got Thurman that just falls on. It's the execution by England, not the game plan, because it has worked beautifully. Men have been open all over the field. They've run the ball enough to contain the Dallas defense. As we see Danny White run out the final seconds here in the first half. Hope you're enjoying it from Foxborough. Halftime activities coming up very shortly. And there it is. And we'll be back at halftime after this message and a word from our local stations. It's Dallas 17, New England 14. The Miami Dolphins went to Houston, Texas, failed to join in the chorus of Love Ya Blue. Uvi Von Schaman had a great day. Three field goals, total of 10 points. And on Houston's very first possession of the game, look at that, sacked by Bob Baumhauer. That young Miami defense is something. Bob had four in the day, the team had eight. Now, striking back in the second quarter, trailing seven to six, David Woodley with a clutch pass to the tight end, Joe Rose. Good play, set up a field goal. Miami led 9-7 to seven at halftime in the fourth quarter. Houston clinging to a one-point lead. Miami's ball its own 23. Andrew Franklin, the rookie from Nebraska, straight up the middle. Good for 29 yards. That set the stage for backup quarterback Don Strock, who had a hot hand. Look at those stats. This throw to Duriel Harris, number 82. And then the Dolphins were inside the 20. Strock kept the moving. Then this quick flip to Andra Franklin. Touchdown, the Dolphins and their defense prevailed 16 to 10 over the blue. The Atlanta Falcons, led by a quarterback who has come into his own, Steve Bodkowski, playing with a flak jacket. Damaged ribs, should never believe it. Atlanta's first possession. Steve Bodkowski to Alfred Jackson. Touchdown, a 29-yard play. 7 to nothing, Atlanta. It became 10 to nothing. Then Atlanta again, still the first quarter. Watch this. That little throw to Lynn Kane. You're not going to believe this run. That tackler avoided. Now, watch this evidence of balance. Hit by two. Hand touches ground, hand touches ground. It does it for the third time. Then pulling his way through that tackler. In for the score. And so it was 17 to nothing in the second quarter. San Francisco trying to strike back with Joey Montana, quarterback out of Notre Dame. Montana finding Charlie Young all alone. In for the touchdown, 17 to 7. The halftime score was 24 to 10, Atlanta. In the third quarter, Joey Montana, San Francisco threatening on the Falcon six. Throws over the middle. The ball picked off by number 27, Tom Pridemore. He gets a sheath of blockers. Moves to the right sideline. Nobody going to get a chance to touch him. Makes you good to see a kid like Pridemore perform this way. He's a member of the West Virginia State Legislature. And after that 101-yard touchdown return on the intercept, he can get any bill he wants passed in that state legislature. What a return by 
by Tom Friedman. And so the score went to 31 to 10. But Bartkowski wasn't done yet. Watch this one. One of his favorite people to throw to, number 84, Alfred Jenkins. Now look, he can get up. Nobody touched him, and he does exactly that. Down at the one, that sets up a field goal. Atlanta won it 34 to 17. The San Diego Chargers, who have proved they can be awesome, went in to face a tough Kansas City team, led as always by their great quarterback, Dan Fouts. Kansas City hurtled to a 7-0 lead. Fouts quickly struck back. That pass to tight end Kellen Winslow, it was 7-7. Still in the first quarter, Fouts had only just begun. He's looking for the rookie from Auburn, James Brooks. And if you want to see a brilliant running rookie, watch number 21. Cuts back past that would be tacky. Now, watch the blockers seem to fade away in front of him. He is hit there and hit by two tacklers there, but breaks the tackles. This is a kid who never gives up. He has a way of squirming and twisting and eating up the yardage. Now watch Kellen Winslow take care of Harris. In for the touchdown went James Brooks. And so it was 14 to 7 San Diego. It moved up to 21 to 7 in the second quarter. But Fouts wasn't through yet. Watch him drop back. He's looking for Eric Sievers, number 85. And throwing in his impeccable style, right to Sievers, touchdown 28 to 7, San Diego. It was 28 to 14 at halftime. And Kansas City wouldn't quit. They fought back to 35 to 31, which it was in the fourth quarter. Young Kenny out of North Colorado throwing. The ball intercepted by Leroy Jones, number 68. Watch him. Lateral to Gary, big hands Johnson, touchdown. San Diego goes on to win the game, 42-31. The Chicago Bears playing host to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bears winless, needing a victory. Vince Evans with that throw, deflected. And Mike Washington, number 40, picked it off. It was an easy jaunt into the end zone. A 7 to nothing lead for Tampa Bay. It became 7-7 in the second quarter. A minute remaining in the first half. A punt by Tampa Bay. Now watch this. That's Jeff Fisher. Watch him run left. That's the spot to cut back. Find that quick hole. Burst through it, accelerating. Then follow your blockers. Cut to the right sideline. And you'll go all the way, just the way Jeff Fisher did. 88-yard return. Beautiful downfield blocking, as you saw. And so the Bears were ahead 14-7. In the third quarter, it became 14-14. Bears ball, first and goal. Look at that draw by the quarterback, Vince Evans, a fine, versatile athlete from USC. 21-14. Became 21-17. But... Chicago, after the field goal by Tampa Bay, struck again. Evans, right there, to David Williams, number 22. The Bears won it, 28 to 17, their first victory. So they feel they're ready for the Rams. Next half time. Half time stats. Look at that. Look at the way New England came back, especially in yards passing. The total yards almost even. Dallas slightly ahead in time of possession. A simply terrific football game, but with New England making the key mistakes. And you can't overlook that. This man, spectacular. 75-yard touchdown run. Did much of it on his own. Great blocking, however, at the line of scrimmage. Not bad stats. Six more. As I told you earlier, he'll become the second leading all-time rusher behind Don Perkins replacing Calvin Hill. Both teams coming into tonight. For New England, they had lost their first two ball games. They lost to Baltimore. They lost to Philadelphia last week. Dallas, meanwhile, beat Washington 26 to 10. They beat St. Louis 30 to 17. Dallas 12 and 4 last year, tied with England, uh, rather Philadelphia. They lost in a tiebreaker in the playoffs. They beat Los Angeles, Atlanta, then they lost to the Eagles in the NFC Championship. New England 10 and 6. Buffalo winning their division with an 11-5 mark. No word delay, and this goes back to our opening of the telecast tonight. New England has not been able to contain Tony Dorsett, but they've handled the fearsome front four of Dallas. Kavanaugh getting superb protection. Frank Septian hits it for Dallas. 
Tony Collins from the five yard line for New England. And Tony Collins out close to the 30 yard line. Taken there by Anthony Dickerson. And we anticipate Matt Cavanaugh's return with Calhoun and Collins, although they have been alternating setbacks. Stanley Morgan has been a factor and a big factor in the lineup as wide receiver number 86 for New England. He's been out for several weeks with a sore ankle and a knee. Harold Jackson is back in the lineup and Don Hasselbeck. He had three big receptions for 93 yards for New England. First and 10, New England. They're at their own 27. Calhoun, right side. And Calhoun met first by Big Ed Jones, who has been the defensive MVP in both the Cowboys' early games. Charlie Waters also helping out. Calhoun will come out, and Tatupu, who is seeing a lot of action tonight, comes into the lineup. I'll tell you again, Sam Cunningham signed his contract. He reported one week ago and started working out. Not available, however, tonight. He's been out of the game for a year. Morgan, foot left, as is Jackson. Hasselbeck, number 80, bottom of your screen. Second and eight. Wide open is Jackson. Down the sideline, Jackson. To the 41-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys, splitting Michael Downs. Frank New England's been picking them apart all night. Cavanaugh getting superb protection. Receivers wide open all over the place as you look at it again. But they have not capitalized. And up to this point, that's the key. There's Downs making the stop. And it was good pattern run by Jackson. Ball well thrown by Cavanaugh. He's having himself a night. Carlos Pennywell is in briefly to give Jackson a breather. All near the 41. Cavanaugh back quickly. Fired and complete. Tony Collins. To about the 38-yard line. It'll be a gain of three. Second down and seven. Guy Brown defensively for the Dallas Cowboys. There he is. He's big. 6'4", 228-pounder. He has had a lot of little injuries that maybe the Cowboys felt should not have kept him out of the lineup. He got his opportunity to play when Mike Hageman suffered a broken arm against the Washington Redskins. Second and eight. Draw play. Tatupu. And Tatupu with a big opening. He'll go in. There are no flags. Well, what a move. 38-yard touchdown run. Great acceleration at the line of scrimmage on a little quick draw to Tutupu. You've got to think when you see a play like that that something happened to the middle linebacker. I really don't know. I'm sure we'll see it again in a minute. Caught the Dallas secondary into a double zone. All right, let's see what happens to Bruni. Right in the middle. Pretty good standoff there on the outside. Anna's doing a good job on White. Bruni gets caught up in the middle, as does Dutton. Charlie Waters comes in, hits, bounces off, and he runs. Memo. Memo to Dick Vermeil and Carl Peterson. Stop calling Bucko Gilroy. You're not getting Mosey to Dupo. We have a new leader. The New England Patriots is John Smith. Splits the uprights. And the Patriots are on top. Really 21 to 17 on a very fine run of 38 yards by Mosi Tatupu. I don't know what's tougher. My job or this new Chevy pickup calls a lot of payloads, helps smooth out those country roads. And you can't buy a V8 powered car or truck with better gas mileage ready. But after a long, hard day. Hey, cowboy. This dude's ready to play. And I play. Just as hard as I work. The interest rate rollback ends September 23rd. Don't wait till it's too late for 13.8. Everywhere I go, people ask me, Arnie, is that old tractor you drove in the Pennzoil commercial still running? Still running? We use it here at Latrobe every day. And with Pennzoil protecting the engine, there are a lot more miles left in it. You know, this old tractor and I are a lot alike. We're both still using Pennzoil, and we're both still running. Gas-saving Pennzoil. Quality in every extra mile. 
capacity crowd of 61,000 plus is loving every moment of it. The New England Patriots looking for their first one of the season. Set to kick off. There's James Jones for Dallas. Mike Kubach will put it in the air for New England. An electrifying run by Tatupu. Jones from his 10-yard line. And out to the 30-yard line. Closing down on a Lynn Dawson. Let's look at that draw again. Another look in the middle. You got Pete Brock coming in from the center position, but a good, good block also. Oh, they've got Dutton in there pretty good shape. Charlie Waters came from his strong safety. That's just not a very good tackling position. Both those safeties and the cornerbacks were into a double zone on both sides, so Charlie had to make a little move from out the outside to come in, but basically missed it. The offensive unit of the Dallas Cowboys back out on the field. They've been able to spring Dorsett. They've been able to hit Ron Springs. They've been able to hit Tony Hill and Butch Johnson. Now they trail. White on first down. Fires a complete to Butch Johnson, and Johnson is out of bounds, up over the 35-yard line. Gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. These two teams really have offensive firepower. Neither has shown the capacity to stop the other. There's Mosey. <laughs> he's had a night. I don't understand why he's been played so little the last four years, Gift. <laughs> They've been saving him for this game. <laughs> Second down and three. Drew Pearson, number 88, top of your screen. Out of the eye. Short handoff, Ron Springs. Line of scrimmage, squeezes out a yard. It'll be third down and two. Richard Bishop on the bottom of that pile. Big number 64. Bishop won a four holdouts a year ago. An excellent nose guard. He's been seeing a lot of action for Ray Hamilton. Ray Hamilton hurt in the preseason with a bad ankle. Bishop moved in at nose tackle. He can play at the end. He can play at the tackle. And right now, they stay in a 3-4. Three, three tight ends are in. That's Saudi in motion. We have Dupree and Cosby also. Ron Springs. There will be no first down, and Dallas will have to turn it over. And this New England Patriot team is really goosed up. They're fired up now, and look at those fans. They've been waiting a long time in New England, and they know the season is young. A win tonight puts them at one and two. If they can do it, that's not going to be easy against a great Dallas team. Tom Landry in his 22nd year. He's not above being a little itchy, is he? Now, is he the only coach Dallas has ever had? Mm -hmm. There's Roland James. Danny White will punt. That's a strange question. <laughs> Catch indicated Dallas saying they have the football. There's a scramble. New England says, no, we have it. Roland James would have been better advised to have gone for the fair catch as New England turns it over. Absolutely. A team with a capacity as they proved tonight for the key mistake again and again and again. Dallas has certainly had the swing of good fortune so far tonight. Very easily, New England could have another touchdown on the board as we saw a fumble into the end zone right before the half. The first down is inside the 20-yard line at the 19. They've got a little razzle-dazzle play. It's a good position for them to, to do this. They've got these wide receivers that can throw passes. They'll reverse. Green pass could come up any time. Back into the pro set, now back into a wing set, the door set, and now in motion. They show you so many things. Ron Springs, opening on the left side. is Springs showing you the strength and power that takes him to the 15. In a four, it'll be second down and six. This Springs has really developed for Dallas. They got him cheap. They got him in the third round. Or actually, he was the third, fifth round draft pick. He had led Ohio State as a junior, was hurt as a senior, slipped by a lot of folks. And Ron Springs has turned into a superb football player. He's a backup man also to Tony Dorsett. Second and six. Ball at New England's 15-yard line. Springs 
Another big hole. Spring inside the 10. Close to a first down. Bill Matthews defensively first there for New England. There's Makovic. We'll see the signal in a moment. That's the call. Of course, I'm much like baseball, some of them are dummy calls. It's less than one for the first on third down. Robert Newhouse comes into the lineup, his first appearance on the night. He lost his job in training camp when he pulled a muscle and Ron Springs developed so rapidly. Saudi, Newhouse. Newhouse turned back. It'll be fourth down. Well, now, you got to wonder, Newhouse just barely made the huddle. I mean, he's the guy to give the ball to. I wonder if he knew that it was his play they'd call. <laughs> well, he did. He was the last man out there. He hadn't been here all night. And uh, got a man's hand. New England Patriot. Tim Fox. Oh, they can't Great afford free to. safety. That's true. And what a spirit. And they're showing a lot of resolution out there tonight as you look at Timmy Fox and his vital statistics. Now lives here in Foxborough, but grew up with our own Steve Fazika in Canton, Ohio. Did you know that, Frank? Absolutely. Tim Fox, one of the many players acquired by New England in the trade of O.J. Simpson. And he is being attended to by the medical staff of the New England Patriots. We remind you, again, this Saturday, you'll be seeing NCAA college football. It'll be regional action starting at 12 o'clock Eastern. Boston College will be in North Carolina, Oregon State, and Minnesota, Florida, Mississippi State, San Jose, California. That's a special time at 10.30. As we can see, Timmy Fox is in pretty good shape. Then following Wide World of Sports at 5 o'clock Eastern, the second half of our NCAA doubleheader, Oklahoma and USC, and how about Marcus Allen out of USC? 210 yards in his first game, 274 yards against Indiana last Saturday. He only carried 138 times. Only kidding. He carried it 40 times, though. He's 30. Dallas has choose the field goal. They'll go on fourth down. A full yard. Saudi in motion. Dorsett easily the first down. It'll be first and goal to go with the seven. Kind of reminds me of the old days of Oakland. They like to run left, and so does Dallas over Pat Donovan and Herb Scott. Two pro bowlers, and you see Dorsett saying, wait a minute, something pinched my elbow. No Dallas threatening. Roland James did not go for the fair catch. Bobbled the ball. Dallas recovered the fumble. And now they have a first and goal, and Timmy Fox, we are glad to report, is back in the game for New England. Drew Pearson right. Brooks Johnson left. James Jones, number 23, gets the call over the right side. He's piled up and maybe squeezes a yard out. It'll be second down and goal. James Jones, the ball carrier, has been plagued with a few injuries this year also, but you saw him run in that time as Tony Dorsett did go out. A minute ago, I mentioned as part of the O.J. Simpson trade, we were just in Buffalo, by the way, it was Jim Plunkett. And they got a lot for him. They got Pete Brock out there. They've got Tim Fox. They got Ray Claiborne and Horace Ivory. All for Puckett. And he was traded to San Francisco. Second down, goal to go. Put it in the air. Nope. On Springs. Getting closer. They're not paying any attention to you not, Howard. Mm. It'll be third. And goal to go, the ball inside the two, and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. WFAA Television, Channel 8, Dallas Fort Worth. And if you've just joined us, Dallas got the scoring underway in the first quarter. They led 7 to nothing. New England came back with Don Calhoun to tie it at 7. Septian put the Cowboys ahead again in the second quarter. Then Tony Dorsett went 75 yards to make it 17 to 7. We're looking at a 21-17 game now. New England in the lead. Third down, goal to go. Danny White, man wide open, and if Billy oh. go to free, no one even near him. That's called stacking it against them, man. Nobody was there to cover Billy Joe. An unusual call had a motion going the other way. Danny rolled back toward where the motion came from. 
You'll see it here. I think this is Cosby coming into motion. A little fake in to Springs. Rolls out. Nobody there. That was Ron Schultz that had a little shot at. Uh, maybe that was Schultz's man, as a matter of fact. He's the linebacker on that side. Schultz was in there trying to hit Danny White. Didn't make it. I think they do. Dupree blocks down for just a moment. The safety thinks run. Takes his eyes off. Dupree slides in behind him. That was perfectly executed. Septian for the conversion. Dallas says regain the lead with 7.29 remaining in the third quarter. The Cowboys back out in front, 24-21. Good action. Stay with us. Here we go. Seven plays. They move 19 yards following the Roland James fumble of the front, which he should have called for a fair catch and did not. Tony Collins is deep. Raphael Septian will put it in the air for Dallas. Or almost in the air. Low line driver. Collins one hops it. And he's on his way. Now to about the 29 yard line goes Tony Collins. And you have to wonder without New England's mistake, this would be an entirely different ball game. Be a runaway for the Patriots, but they make the mistakes, and Dallas is an opportunistic team. Brilliantly coached. Grasping every chance. Matt Cavanaugh. Good night for Cavanaugh. New England from their 29-yard line. Collins 33, Calhoun 44, setbacks for New England. Cavanaugh again with good protection and an open receiver, Stanley Morgan. Dennis Thurman, man to man on Morgan, and Morgan was there, and that ball was well thrown. And New England has met one challenge tonight despite their mistakes. As you look at Stanley and Iso, they have really contained the Dallas pass rush. They really have, and I think that's the real key. Howard, he's getting, he's really having a lot of time to throw. And Thurman, they've got some inexperience back there. Even in Thurman, he hasn't been in that long, so they're really working on man-to-man. -man. Ball near the 48-yard line for the first down. Earl Jackson, top of your screen. Tupu, this time piled up as Big Ed Jones throws it down from his defensive end position. Not that time. Eddie Lee. Ed Jones. Was he a pretty good boxer when he took that year out, Howard? <laughs> well, that answers that. I wouldn't want him to go three rounds with Sugar Ray Leonard, despite his size. Get a broken kneecap. <laughs> kneecap of about a yard, a yard and a half. He'd get water on the knee. That's what Ali almost got when he fought Chavalo in Toronto. Why did I bring it up? I don't know. Second down. Kavanaugh. Oh. And no receiver downfield, and Kavanaugh steps out of bounds. Don't you think he may have made a mistake? He had three red shirts out there. I thought us. he did. I think he could have made some more yardage that time. It's the first time he's been out of the pocket all night that I can remember. Lost of about a half a yard. So it'll be third and long. Not a good situation against the Dallas defense. Very big situation for the Pats. Third down and 11. Hasselbeck comes out. As we have three wide receivers, that's Jackson, 29, Stanley Morgan, who's been a factor tonight, a big one. Number 86, and Westbrook is number 83. From the shotgun. Going deep is Kavanaugh. Stanley Morgan, who is running as if he is not troubled at all with knee and ankle. Kavanaugh threw that one way too quickly. He saw the blitz coming from Dallas. They picked him up, but he just got a little bit nervous in his throw through it too quickly. Did give the pattern a chance to develop. New England running for their first time tonight. And James Jones settles in at the 10. Too much. What? Mike Kubach it was terrible in preseason, almost lost his job, but he's been good over the past two games. He's had a lot of practice, I guess I could say. This is Jones. And Jones with a risky maneuver. That is 15, gets out to the 17-yard line on the 34-yard punt by Hubach. Not a bad punt. 
the Cowboys will be deep in their own territory when we return to Foxborough. Simon and Garfunkel's phenomenal reunion, Thursday on 2020. Back in Foxborough, seesaw game. Made so by the fact that New England has been playing superb football, fired up, but they've just made the mistake. A couple of them forced, however, by Dallas. A couple of fumbles. First down at 10. Dallas at their own 18-yard line. They show you oh so many formations, and you have to think about each and every one of them. Person in motion. Dorsett. Stutter set. Then the acceleration. And Dorsett is the second all-time leading rusher for the Cowboys as he gets the first down out over the 35 to the 37 where Mike Haynes was there defensively for New England. Oh, does he move around? Good little false start to one side. You'll see him coming back out to the, to the outside. That was uh, Cooper, I believe, that was in the lead. Now playing off of Thrill Hill's block. Picked up a few more yards before Haynes moved in there and picked him up. Do you believe that Steve Nelson, the best tackler of New England, didn't need to slow him down? That's right. Missed. It. First and 10 Dallas. The own 37 yard line. White. Yeah. Tony Hill. A surgical job now being applied by the Cowboys right in front of Rick Sanford. Tony Dorsett, 129 yards the, against St. Louis, 132 against Washington as we watch Tony Hill once again. Back out of Rick Sanford. If you remember, they've really been working over in that area quite a bit tonight. Not saying that Sanford is, is bad. It's just that when they're looking at what the other choices are, they really have tried to isolate him as much as they can. Hill didn't play a single down in preseason, so he's getting off to a late start. You'll make, you'll make 142 yards this far on the night for our Tony Dorsett. We have four minutes to go in the third quarter. First and ten. That's Pearson in motion. This is Dorsett. This time, no chance at all as Ray Hamilton slid off the block of Rafferty and made the stop right at the line of scrimmage. Great statistic on this young man. Ten straight years, now you're going all the way back to high school. This man has rushed for over a thousand yards. This year he seems to be a much more dedicated player. His best game ever is 206 yards. And he has, as I said, 142 tonight. Second and 10. A man is open. Oh, oh, springs. springs out of the backfield. How about that little one-hand catch? Not shabby. Nice throw, but also a nice catch out there. Pretty, pretty good coverage. Straight drop back pass. Looking to Springs out on the outside. Schultz trying to follow him in there. Good move by Springs to reach out and bring that ball back in. He has become exceptional. Springs really, really has. has. Great development. Mike uh, Hawkins instead of Schultz. I'm sorry. Now, boys, 24, New England, 21. Third down, long five. Out of the shotgun. Inside handoff, this one does not work, and almost bobbled Ron Springs. With a good effort to hold on to it, it'll be fourth down. What a play by Tony McGee. He read that so perfectly. He either did or he got off the line real slow. I'm not sure which one it was, <laughs> because they ran right into him, and he charged that field. He saw it coming. Yep, Moved sure back did. into the inside. Had that ball been dropped, of course, that would be a forward pass. Incomplete pass. Tony McGee is going it on his own. Remember over the years, his team with Mel Lunsford makes a big play for New England. Mike Haynes drops. There he is. Danny White looks over the situation. This time, he'll angle it to his left. And Danny White catches one at the 11-yard line. Good punt by Danny White, who says, one day, I would like to lead the league in passing and punting. Sammy Baugh did it, 41 and 43. Two million pounds of parts for one of the world's largest computer companies. Eight ounces of film expressed for a local news station. Four million pounds of equipment for a major electronics company. And a one pound envelope expressed for a small brokerage firm. Even though airline schedules are up in the air, there isn't a plane at Emory that's grounded. In fact, Emory is carrying more shipments to more places more often than anyone. Emory, 
at the right place at the right time. Uh, Rainmaker to ground. Okay, Rainmaker. One more, how to do it? Raj, picking us up a refill. Tell that fire not to go anywhere. <laughs> Bullseye, you got it. Does that mean it's Miller time? Roger, over and out. Well, it's time to relax. One beer stands clear. Saturday, Matthew Saad Mohammed defends his WBC World Light Heavyweight title, plus Steve Ovet and the world's best in the Fifth Avenue Mile. Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. I hope you are enjoying our fifth game in 16 days at the start of the 1981 NFL season. And next Monday night, we'll be in Chicago for the Bears in Los Angeles. And the Rams, of course, will have to get their act together. A different act it is because Atlanta is off to a great start. They're three and zero. Bears winners yesterday. On first and ten, Kavanaugh with a handoff to Calhoun. Calhoun runs into a peck of trouble out on the right side. Harvey Martin, representing most of it, getting help from Everson Walls. Closed the hole quickly, abruptly. Martin did. Looked like Calhoun might spurt for some decent yardage, but not with Harvey. They had the two wide receivers flanked out very wide that time, trying to spread that Dallas defense. But you both have called it. Harvey cut it off before he had a chance to get into that secondary, the linebacker position. If Calhoun three, it'll be second down and seven. Kavanaugh with the time once again. Does it a possession? No. Ruled incomplete. The official facing the play. Indicated Wait a minute. an incompletion, what? and now they could be reversed. I think that was Stanley be. Morgan. They'll talk it over. Shelby Jordan was quick to get in there and argue, and I think he's right. I thought it was a completion. It's a, basically a new rule, or explaining the rule of possession on a reception. You used to have to be able to do something common to the game on the reception. Nope. Not anymore. Once you show possession, and you drop it, you've lost it. Understand the rule, Vince. So if y'all, one of y'all do, tell me about it. Now, what, he catches the ball. Is he supposed to take a step with it? They called possession in the first half on Andy Johnson just before the end. Look at that. I, I, I think it was me, the same thing as the Johnson play with a different call. It appeared to me that he caught it and the ball was knocked out by the defensive back. Exactly right. Same thing that Benny Barnes did to Andy Johnson just before the end of the half. Academic incompletion. Third down and seven. Academic to you, kid. <laughs> Not to New England. Well, I'm just trying to get back to the game. Out of the shotgun. Uh, in and out of the hands of Tony Collins. The ball is well thrown. And there's nobody around to defend that one. Somebody really screwed up. Incredible the way New England fails. Well, they're just victimized by their own mistakes. They've got receivers wide open. They've had them wide open all night. Who bunch was kicked once tonight, not effectively. James Jones at midfield for Dallas. They could have good field position once again. 148 remaining in the third quarter. Dallas over New England, 24-21. Who bunch hangs it up. Jones a rebound is the ball as. Flag now goes down. I'm going to guess that. Been, they could have interfered with his right to catch the ball. I think that's it, Frank. And it looked like his own man was driven into it. Did he cover the fumble anyway? No, and I thought New England recovered it. There it is. Against New England. You have to let him catch the ball. And it'll be marked off against New England. We'll get the official phrasing from Jerry Mark I know it's only the third quarter, a minute 39 to go. Interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch. Number 62 on the kicking team. 
First down. Dwight Wheeler. But the string runs out. No team can make this number of mistakes and expect to win. Ron Earhart really exercised now on the sidelines. And Dallas, field position. They're at the 33-yard line of New England. They lead by three. Tony Dorsett, single setback. Saldi adjusts to a wing spot, number 87. Here comes Dorsett. Steve Nelson defensively there for New England. Dorsett inside the 30-yard line, close to the 27. That's a, a play that I think the defensive coaches could say, we have that play defensed about as well as we can defense it. And then all of a sudden, he picks up four or five yards. He does that. I Saldi adjusts to a wing spot, number 87. Here comes Dorsett. Steve Nelson defensively there for New England. Dorsett inside the 30-yard line, close to the 27. That's a, a play that I think the defensive coaches could say, we have that play defensed about as well as we can defense it. And then all of a sudden, he picks up four or five yards. He does that. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, the pursuit was there. They played it well. And nevertheless, he gets five yards out of it. He's averaging nine yards a carry, slightly over it. This is a great football game. Our blocker in front, by the way, 67, was all pro Pat Donovan. Second and five. Ron Springs. Springs has the first down. No, nope, they will mark it back. And they'll have third down. A little more than two. And we're in the final minute of the third quarter. Tripped him up back there. His knee touched and he was down there. I think he got a, jumped up and lunged forward for that. Third down at two. Passing down, at least from the personnel in there for Dallas. Butch Johnson, 86. Tony Hill, 80. Drew Pearson, the three excellent wide receivers. It's Tony Hill way up there at the top of your screen. Danny White, Ron Springs, gets away from Nelson. And this time he does have the first down as time has expired in the third quarter. We're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. That is the end of the third quarter. The score, 24-21 Dallas. We'll return for the fourth quarter. But right now, this message from our local stations. Coming September 30th, a magnificent drama of human rage and desire. It's Dallas! Dallas! And lovers caught in a passionate struggle for freedom. You're going to have to get him out of the country. Nothing could keep them apart. The Manions of America. Emotion from a Dallas jury today when one of the victims of the Skyride accident talked about life since then. And in Fort Worth, it's back to the drawing board for a new city jail. Details in the update. This butts for the people who make the tough jobs all part of a day's work. This butts for you. just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Good morning. There's a new name to remember. Republic Bank. And thanks for doing business with uh, Republic Bank. Welcome to Republic Bank. Welcome to Republic Bank. Welcome to Republic Bank. Republic of Texas banks have a new name next to their silver star. It means the same dedicated people now backed by immense resources and strong financial experience all across Texas. Republic Bank, what can we do for you? Republic Bank, we know no limits. It's Whole Earth TV, Tuesday at 6.30. <laughs> That's the story. As we begin the fourth quarter, the Dallas Cowboys leading 24 to 21 over New England. New England with two losses in the early season. Dallas with two victories. Dallas has a first and ten. The ball at the 21-yard line of New England. Tony Hill split far to the left. Drew Pearson to the right. Two tight ends are in. Saldi and Dupree. Saldi, 83. Another 87. Anyway, 
it out to Dorsett, and Dorsett goes down in the arms of Mike Hawkins. Hawkins was lying in wait for that. Third quarter stats. Look how close the first down saw. Yards rushing, Dallas the big edge. Yards passing, now the big edge to New England. Total yards almost even. The turnover's the key. Time of possession important, but the turnover's the key, representing the proliferation of New England mistakes. We have a second down and 18. The ball back at the 29-yard line following the loss. We're going to cover it from the end zone. Dallas figures to put it in the air. Danny White is back. Trying to get off the screen, and the screen man could not get open. It was Dorsett who got tangled up with his little fake block. One of the New England Patriots got an arm on him far short of a first down. And it'll be third down and approximately 11 yards. New England has played good football tonight. They're playing very tough team to get ready for defensively because of all the formations and all the sets. They have played well. They have given up yardage, but most teams will to Dallas. And we'll cover it again on third down and long yardage from the end zone. Get the view of Tim Fox, the free safety. Going deep for Pearson. Complete. Mike Haynes was back there. Well, you got to give it to New England. Again, they showed character. Dallas desperately wanting the touchdown. Look the end of the play, Don. Okay, from the other side of the field, we use a reverse angle, and you'll see pretty good effort on both these guys' part. Pierce is trying to come back, get in front. He didn't quite hang on to it, actually. Ball was intercepted by Mike Haynes on the ground, but he was out of the end zone. Septian has already kicked one from 26. This attempt will be from 40. Charlie Waters holds the ball for Dallas. Rafferty snaps it. This time, Septian string of eight consecutive field goals misses. So New England, they stiffen. And they are in this ball game. They trail by three as we are just getting underway in the fourth quarter. Victoria, darling, my heart. Stop, camera. Wash the suit. Wash the suit? It's the Haker washable suit in Visa Fabrics, made a new way to be machine washed and dried. And action. Victoria, my Cut, cut, cut. I don't believe it. The Hager washable suit is guaranteed to keep its great looks and fit for its normal life or your money back. The Hager washable suit. <laughs> guaranteed wash after wash after wash. I'll try almost anything. So when Mattel Electronics asked me to compare their Intellivision games with Atari, I gave it a try. I compared Atari baseball with Intellivision and found Intellivision played much more like real baseball. Then I compared Atari football with Intellivision. Again, Intellivision played more like the real game. In my opinion, if you try them both, there's only one conclusion you can come to. Intellivision from Mattel Electronics. New England will take possession. First and ten, the ball at the line of scrimmage. The missed field goal attempt outside the 20. The line of scrimmage will be the 22. The Sipion string, eight consecutive, broken, but he did set a new Dallas Cowboy record of eight consecutive field goals. Kavanaugh having a fine night. Lays one up and it's there too long. Everson falls and picks it off. Is he? Is that kid nowhere to go? We told you about him earlier. Three interceptions in preseason. Led the nation in college last year at Grambling. What's interesting is that finally, I think they've come up with a great cornerback. Through all the years of Dallas excellence, as we look at the end zone replay, the only great cornerback they had was Renfro. Adderley came late in the game to Green Bay. But look at this kid with a nose for the football. 
and he may be the answer. His second interception of the night, and the Dallas Cowboys now will have a first down and goal to go at the eight-yard line of New England. And he was a free agent. <laughs> Local boy out of Dallas, Texas, went to Richardson High School. Fifth, fifth turnover for New England. Fifth. Change it up. And he better hurry. He gets it off. And very ineffectively. I'm telling you. I don't believe that. <laughs> Dorsett and White, one of them did the wrong thing. At least did, Dorsett could have been hurt on that play. So good White. <laughs> it's one of your basic foul ups. You saw him try to change the play. And evidently, <laughs> that audible didn't quite work out just well, just right. So at least they got on the ball. Did that ever happen to you? Yeah, it's really awful. Because <laughs> a lot of times it's your fault. The quarterback calls the audible, and then just, turns the wrong way. There's a speak in the well oil machine after all. That's right. Practically there's a perfect. loss of six. Looking down, 16. Draw play. That's the play they had called. Well set. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, big play now. Third down and goal to go. Steve Nelson defensively. You sometimes get the feeling that Dallas outsmarts themselves. They got so many things that they do real well, and every once in a while you see them try to get a little oh, bit that, too that, cute. In the last series, the dump off pass to Dorsett when he was covered like a blanket. And uh, earlier, the shovel pass, you remember? Yeah. They lead 24-21 and threatening. Third down, goal to go. Pearson, wide receiver in motion. Danny White throws into a crowd, incomplete. Dave Saldi is back there, and now Septian will trot back out once again. Well, you've got to give New England credit again. They're hanging tough. I don't think Ted can miss another. Septian has well, missed from 40 yards, has hit from 26. This one, another 26-yard attempt. Charlie Waters to hold. Splitting the uprights. And Dallas has extended their lead, but not a comfortable six points. We'll be returning to Foxborough in just a moment. every visit. Save them up. Get 21 and win fries, a Coke, a Whopper, or great cash prize. $2,100! Yes, $21! Get the Ace and Jack of Spades and win $250! what you could do with a personal computer that's powerful enough to handle technical and business problems, that's versatile enough to control graphic plotters, flexible disks, and even scientific instruments, and yet, with its own built-in screen and printer, is so complete in itself that you can take the solution wherever there's a problem. The HP 85 from Hewlett-Packard, when professional performance must be measured by results. The New England Patriot defense has stiffened once again. This time, Dallas settles for three. They lead by six. 27-21. That's Tony Collins. Septian. <laughs> Collins takes it at the six. Good play. They go down at the 15 in the arms of Anthony Dickerson, who's always down there on those special teams. What a play that was. American League Finals. The Red Sox stay red hot. Detroit beats Baltimore. Rick Waits comes alive, shuts out the Yankees. Oakland, Toronto postponed. Minnesota running away from Western Division leading Kansas City. Texas over Seattle. California ahead. And here comes New England. 
They need to start moving the football. Their defense has been on the field too long. And of course, they need to stop making the errors. Kavanaugh checks off quickly, comes out to Collins. Collins negotiates his way down to the 18 yard line. Pick up a four, it'll be second and six. The National League, two to nothing. Look at that, nothing, nothing. The 16th, Steve Paul in the National League all time strikeout record tonight. What a game. Jump Bucks and the Mets in extra innings, tied at three. Cincinnati, San Diego, tied at zip, fifth inning. Matt Kavanaugh having a fine night. We got Stanley Morgan back in the lineup tonight, and he's made a big difference. His speed makes the Cowboys change their defenses considerably. This time, big Ed Jones is all over Tony Collins, and there is a loss. Notice in the inside the 15-yard line. Forgive me, Frank. Notice in the clutch how Dallas is now making the plays that they weren't making through the first three quarters. There he is. He is having a great year already. He's coming off the best year ever when he took that season of 79 off to go into boxing. He's one of our guys that has been traveling all over the country with us. Five games, 16 days. Third down and 10 for New England. Kavanaugh has to hurry it. A man is there. It's Jackson. And it's first down New England up to the 44-yard line as Matt Kavanaugh was in trouble, and now a flag is down. I believe we're going to have holding against New England. I tell you, New England has not had a lot of breaks tonight. <laughs> oh, you can't. It's just disastrous. Every critical mistake. Kavanaugh moved up in the pocket. He was being rushed, held together, threw a decent enough ball. The receivers getting free all night. How long can a team remain staunch? Interesting move right there. I saw Thornton come out, and Harvey Martin told him to go away. I don't know what Holding. that means. Number 75, offense, third down. Bob Kreider, right guard, holding. Cowboys moving back half the distance to the goal. Box stop of 10.30 remaining in the game. New England down by 6, 27-21 to Dallas. Kavanaugh out of the shotgun. Third down, long yardage, 17. Ed Jones chasing Kavanaugh. You have to get it away. That's illegal. Yeah. They'll yeah. call that one. Now, wait a minute. And well, the same safety, a... if he was yeah. in the grasp of Ed Jones as he was earlier in the game, and that's what they're saying, that he was in the grasp. That's the same as a sack. Intentional grounding From the end in the end zone. Number 12, safety. <laughs> that's the rule. Kavanaugh desperately trying to get it away. That'll be two points. Dallas and New England will have to put it in play from the 20-yard line. It's on replay. I thought Jones might have had his hands on him. But he was getting awful close. And moving into the inside. But all game long, Frank. Larry Bethay, that was the man back there also. Bethay and right? Jones, yeah. both there. All game long, Dallas, uh, New England contained the Dallas rush. When it counts most, now they can't do it anymore. They're getting in. Jones, Martin, Bethay. And what a critical two points that was. A touchdown could no longer do it for New England. Hubach will put it in play with the punt. is deep for Dallas, which is not very deep because New England must put it in play from the 20. No box. Fine kick. Jones takes it at the 26. Gets it back to the 40-yard line. Dallas, good field position. If ever a team desperately needed a Dallas turnover, it's the Pats right now. Quite a night for Mr. White, huh? 21 out of 25. Well, he was 21 out of 29 last week. Dallas will play the Giants, the Giants Stadium. Bill Sims of the Giants had himself a big day along with the defensive unit of the Giants. 
And Dallas will be there next Sunday. Dorsett. Terrific block by Donovan out front. Dorsett. Up to the 49-yard line. Gain of nine. It'll be second and one. I want to remind you, Nightline will focus tonight on the controversy over President Reagan's plan to sell AWACS, the reconnaissance planes, to Saudi Arabia. Guests will include President Reagan's national security advisor, Richard Allen, and the leader of the fight against the sale. That's Senator Allen Cranston of California. That's tonight on Nightline. May I just add, Frank, again, we'd like to express our pride in the fact and Mr. David Brinkley joins ABC News, the official announcement tomorrow. Second down and one for Dallas. They now lead by eight. Dorsett. Stacked up short of the first down. It'll be third down and one. Julius Adams there first. And Dorsett, who sometimes is very slow getting up, is extremely slow this time. I promise you, this is like second guessing. I'm looking out there, and I said, man, they're running him a lot right now. Being treated by the Dallas staff. Looks like the wind may have been knocked out of him. They usually lift those knees up to help us. Let's take a look on the other side of the field in reverse angle and see if we can see what did happen. Didn't make any yardage. They stacked it up pretty well in there. That's Peterson out in front of it. Yeah, it looked like he almost had his knees or his ankle or something went out of it trying to cut there. Mark Bubin came in there, number 63 for New England. And we'll be returning to Foxborough to check on Tony Dorsett and more action after this. You already know that Napa has quality parts for American cars. But how about Napa's import parts? Well, whether you drive a Spider or a Beetle, a Thing or a Brat, or if you just happen to be driving a Rabbit or a Fox, a Miser or a Midget, you can find Napa parts for it. And that adds up to dependability in any language. Because from Audis to Z cars, when the name is Napa, the standard is quality. Here's how I talked my husband into Buick's little limousine. First, I pointed out how elegant it looks. I mean, just look at it. Then I showed him how cushiony and comfortable it feels inside. And I said, just consider how economical the Regal is to drive. I was very convincing. The only problem is, now that I've talked him into it, I can't seem to talk him out of it. Hi. Hi. Wouldn't you really rather have a Saturday, Matthew Saad Mohammed defends his WBC World Light Heavyweight title, plus Steve Ovet and the world's best in the Fifth Avenue Mile, Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. There is much concern on the part of both the Cowboys and the New England Patriot fans as Tony Dorsett walked off the field on his own, and they appear to be checking his test. But Tony Dorsett walked off, no knee or ankle problems apparent. Meanwhile, he lost a half a yard, so it'll be third down and a little more than a yard to go as the New England defense has played superb tonight. Out of the shotgun. Danny White, and wide open is Butch Johnson for the first down. Inside the 40-yard line of New England. Butch Johnson having himself a big night. Three receptions, 47 yards, and of course the touchdown. Really a little unusual. They didn't have it about a yard and a half to go to see him drop back in that shotgun. It shows you how much confidence Dallas does have it. How in the world Bush Johnson got that wide open, I don't know. You saw a lot of that nickel defense, the backs, the five backs in there. Evidently somebody just released him to the middle and no one picked him up. Could have been the loss of Dorsett that forced him to the air because Jones came in for his first appearance. This is Ron Springs. And Ron Springs over the left side. Moves inside the 35. Gain six. Second down four. They're still checking on Dorsett. We'll try and get a report and have it to you as quickly as possible. I tell you, you don't see a guy like that get his, get his wheels hurt. And I thought he limped off a little bit from that picture we showed you a moment ago. It looked like maybe when he tried to cut that either his knee or ankle gave out. 
It's hard to say, but if it's his ribs or something, that's better than his wheels. He's got to run on those wheels. He can tape up those ribs. Dorsett, 163 yards tonight. We don't know whether we'll see him again. He had 132 in the opening game against Washington, 129 versus St. Louis last week. It's second down four. 804. The clock is moving. There's a foul up somewhere, and Danny White tried to sneak a timeout before he loses five for exhausting the 30-second clock. And he flag did go down. Yeah. It'll be marked off. Danny looked up and saw the seconds ticking off that 30-second clock on the scoreboard, tried to hustle in a timeout, and he did not do so. Delay of game, number 11, offense, second down, no charge, timeout. Why do no they blame charge, that on the quarterback? Out. Well, he's the he one that's supposed to get it, it going. Yeah. So, well, get it to me a little more quickly. Second down and 10 now, following the delay of game penalty. Bruised ribs, twisted right ankle for Tony Dorsett. And they did appear to be much more concerned with the bruised ribs. They were not paying a whole lot of attention to an ankle, but you're right, he did limp just a little bit the first two steps when he walked off. Second and ten. Jones. James Jones, first down, down around the 23-yard line, and they just keep coming at you. Must be, that gives you no question about it. After all the mistakes, finally, New England has broken down. Well, this is an indication that Tony Dorsett's a heck of a good runner, but somebody's doing a pretty good job blocking up there, too. That's the same play we saw Tony run a while ago. They start to one side, a little counter move back. The laid move, that, that hole opened up real well. Going back to that left side again. Good blocks on the left side of the line. Herb Scott and Pat Donovan, both pro bowlers on that left side. Donovan just recently having signed a new contract. First down and 10. Ball at the 24-yard line. Seconds ticking away for New England as Ron Springs on the right side. Hammers out four yards down to the 20-yard line. That'll give him three. We'll call it second down and seven. Ray Claiborne defensively there for New England. Rafael Septian will loosen yep. up his wheel. The only cowboy that isn't homegrown. By that mean, by that I mean, either drafted or signed as a free agent by Dallas. They have no one that played with anyone else other than Septian, who and kicked for LA a few years ago. Well, they got that trade with Dutton. You know, they had they got oh, Dutton. Dutton. That's right. They do have another Baltimore. But they, you're right. They like to do it themselves. There he goes again. Hurry. There it is. But they get the playoff, and it's Doug Cosby, the tight end, coming around, getting the first down just as the 30-second clock expired. You see that guy? He's a player, too, and a very fine one. He's the one who moved ahead of Jay Saldi out of Santa Clara. Well, Saldi has been playing most of the night as he limped off a little earlier. 6'6". Six, six. You see the size of that guy? 6'6", yep. six, six, 230. Great, great receiver. Two. The clock keeps winding down. We're inside of six minutes now. Dallas, they use as much time on that clock as they can as they tick it off once again. Danny White can see it. Draw play. Springs. To the 10-yard line on the first down call. Gain of three. It'll be second and seven. And Tim Fox, who was shaken up earlier, shows you the anguish of a team that really knows they are so much better than their record. They really came into this game with great confidence. And when you look back on the game, the whole story is written in their mistakes, they, taking nothing away from Dallas, which played the way Dallas does. Brilliant execution, sees every opportunity. Butch Johnson is split left, Drew Pearson right. On the second and seven call. James Jones, 23, stays in there for Dorsett. Uh, quickly and intended there for Drew Pearson, covered by Ray Claiborne, incomplete. 
Not a typical Monday night for Drew Pearson. His two best games ever occurred on Monday nights. Back in 74, he caught 10 for 161. That was against Philadelphia. He caught nine against Buffalo for 135 and 76. He's had to share the action tonight. Special teams come out for both clubs on third down and seven. Dallas has their three wide receivers. Johnson, 86. Hill, 80. Pearson, 88. And we'll operate out of the shotgun. Less than five minutes remaining to play. And White had to hurry a pass in the direction of James Jones. Fourth down, Seption will come on. Well, if Raphael hits, it'll be an 11-point edge. But that doesn't really reflect the closeness of what has been a very, very exciting game. This is a real challenge for this Cowboy team. New England was tonight. Cowboys lived up to it. The whole game turned when Roland James mistakenly failed to call for a fair catch on a punt. New England had gone ahead. They had stopped Dallas. They had the momentum, and that's when they blew it. In fact, they had stopped Dallas on the very next exchange following the kickoff. And they got the ball back at the 28. And Septian has hit from 28 yards out. An 11-point edge for the Dallas Cowboys over the Patriots with 4.49 remaining in the game. Sometimes I don't want my kids watching what's on TV, but they can still watch something great with our RCA video disc player and video discs. Just flip a switch and on our TV, our kids can see the magic of Walt Disney and Charlie Brown, the Muppets and Mickey Mouse, the Black Stallion, Star Trek, and lots more. Starting at only $15, and the player costs less than $500. Hello, Charlie Brown! Okay, we got it. Great shot. You got me. Come on, Smokehawk. It's Miller time. When it's time to relax, Miller's got the beat. I told you that next Sunday the Cowboys will be at Giants Stadium in New York. And next Sunday the New England Patriots will have to go in and take on the Pittsburgh Steelers who pulled their act together rather convincingly against the Jets yesterday. We're going to watch this from the end zone as Tony Collins looks upfield to Raphael Septian. Collins from his eight-yard line. Collins with a fine run back all the way out to the 39-yard line. Steve Wilson defensively. It's going to be very hard for this team to regroup for the rest of the season. They still have a lot of players. Cunningham appears to be working very well. He'll be joining them, and yet they're already 0-3. And, and how do you come back from that? Yeah, the Pats will go to Pittsburgh next year. Next week, they'll find out. Look out. Oh, and almost picked off. And Guy Brown would have had clear sailing into the end zone had he been able to hold on. Intended for Calhoun. He really would have. That was just a walk on through. A little lame ducks you throw out in the flat sometimes. The quarterback says, I want that one back in a hurry. And Guy Brown should have had that one. Pretty good pressure coming in there. Like Harvey Martin. Ball's not thrown with a great deal of zip. Guy Brown is a half step off. He either had that would have been all the way. I want to move the Giants Cowboy game back to Irving, Texas. Let's do that. I'll put it in Giants Stadium. They'll be in Dallas next week. Not a, not a very good place to visit. Out of the shotgun on second and ten. Kavanaugh under pressure and is picked off. Dennis Thurman. returns it to midfield. That's going to happen when you're trying to play catch-up. That's one of the first times, too, that Randy White has really put any significant pressure on uh, Kavanaugh. You can see that Hannah's been doing a pretty good job on Randy. That's two all-pros. See 
right in the middle. Here comes Big Randy. Harvey was on the outside. He just threw that one way up, up, and away. My beautiful balloon. And leading right in to turn out the lights. The party's over. It was over a couple of plays before Six that. Six turnovers by England tonight. And that was one of them. This man had a couple. We'll be back in a moment. This life isn't for everybody, but for me, nothing beats it. And nothing beats my skull either. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum. Sure feels good. I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And for me, Walt Garrison, this is the only way to live. Try going smokeless with Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. Dear Atari Anonymous, ever since my husband Luno returned from Earth with Asteroids, the new Atari home video game, he and the rest of the family do nothing but play Asteroids. Luno says Asteroids is good practice for his interplanetary life. Tell me, dear Atari Anonymous, with everybody hooked on asteroids, what on earth is a poor Martian mother to do? New Atari Asteroids, now available for your home. The sixth turnover by the New England Patriots, and Dallas has the ball at midfield. midfield. 32-21, very close football game. And had there not been the turnovers, but that is so often the case, New England would have been right in the game and perhaps on top. On Springs to the 45-yard line. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. He's become one of the more impressive players in this league. He has it all. A good receiver. He's really applied himself this year to blocking when Newhouse was heard in training camp where Ron Springs just grew by leaps and bounds. Three touchdowns he scored last week against St. Louis. He's in there now with James Jones, number 23. White on second and six. Springs turns it up. Stops the clock at the 37-yard line with another Dallas first down. Does it all, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Give away your luck. He can play both that fullback spot and the tailback spot. And he's a sturdy guy, very durable. Why not? He's got good size, excellent size. First and 10, 37-yard line of the New England Patriots for the Dallas Cowboys. 3.36 remaining in the game. Remind you again, we'll be in Chicago for the Bears and the Rams a week from tonight. Kirsten put out to the right. You can see sweetness work for those Bears. Sweetness go. Oscar Pearson in motion. And this is James Jones. And he is whacked. 14 of the last 15 years. We told you earlier these Cowboys Oh, no, don't take it out on your team tonight. They made mistakes. They beat themselves, but they played gallantly. There goes Tony. Told ice on the right ankle and ice on the rib cage. Bruce ribs and a twisted ankle. Isn't that strange? Because he really didn't get, you see him, much harder than what we saw that. 14 out of 15 years in the playoffs. That continuity of excellence traces to ownership, front office, and coach. Six times in the Super Bowl, twice a winner. Salvi back in the game, <laughs> and they work it out. Danny White in a lot of trouble back there at the 41-yard line. That's a new play they've developed. That's twice in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Danny, look at it. He says, oh, you got to be kidding. Yeah, will you give me a break? Lost at five. It'll be third down and 15. Yeah, but... Looks like Dallas is going to win this game, but they've really made some pretty big mistakes and really, really should have uh, made score more and more scores. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Timeout has been called by New England. They have two remaining. Danny Wyatt will walk over. Have a visit with Tom Landry. 
I told you earlier about all of our fine engineers who have been traveling around the country with us over the past 16 days. Executive producer of ABC Sports, of course, is Rune Arledge. ABC's Monday Night Football, produced by Bob Goodrich, directed by Chet Forty. Our technical director, Joe Chavio. Our associate director, Joe Chavo. Our associate director, Bob Rosberg. Technical manager, Coach Coltrane. Our unit manager, Lenny Nathan. Assistants to the producer, and they've been busy. Robbie Cowan, John McGinnis, others assisting, Joan Campy, Patty Ryan, and Sal Johnson. They're down 15. Andy White springs. He holds on inside the 10 for another first down at the nine-yard line. That's a good throw. He reared back and let that one go right on a string. Got Springs running pretty, pretty wide open right down the middle. But look at Danny throw this ball. Whoo! Oh, and his spiral's pretty. That one stayed tight, didn't it? Got down there in a hurry. Nice throw. Spirit's gone out of the Patriots now. That's clear. Clock starts, and we will get to the two-minute warning. There's a lot of spirit in those two. <laughs> a lot of spirits. That's plural. And the Cowboys will let it tick down to the two-minute warning. Tom Landry, old teammate of mine. In my youth and his senior citizenship. We'll be back in Foxborough with the final two minutes in a moment. Chevrolet announces the biggest news ever in diesel power light-duty Chevy trucks. The new 6.2-liter diesel, available in all full-size Chevy pickups, Suburbans, and four-wheel drive Blazers. It's a V8 built for trucks only. Everybody knows diesels get good mileage. They're more efficient than gas engines of comparable size. The new 6.2-liter diesel. With so much going for it, it's bound to be popular. Don't wait. Order yours today. Chevy is the power in trucks. You know, for my money, every pair of slacks ought to be this comfortable. These are Levi's Action Slacks. I own four pair now, and I'm convinced they may be the most comfortable slacks a man can wear. First, they have a hidden stretch waistband. It's a great invention. Second, the fabric gives for even more comfort. And now Levi's Action Slacks will stay pressed. Come a washable permanent press that really stays pressed. You try them. Levi's Action Slacks, the easy care, easy to wear slacks from Levi's Menswear. Crowd of some 61,000 showed up here tonight. They saw some fine football played by the New England Patriots, a team that's going to, that is, far better than their record, which will be 0-3 after tonight. And they'll have some hustling to do to catch, well, number one, the Miami Dolphins. They're 3-0, Buffalo's 2-1, Baltimore 1-2. And, and New England and the Jets will both be 0-3. This is Jones on first down. Behind the scrimmage. Seconds ticking away. And New England will use another timeout. That's it, isn't it? They have one remaining. One remaining. The Cowboys have never lost to New England. They've only played it three times. I'd like to tell you again, this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by the Buick Motor Division and your Buick dealer who proudly announced the 1982 Buicks. And by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. All of the fine people who helped us bring you these telecasts. 152 remaining in the game. There's a conversation on the sideline with Tom Landry, John Makovic, we told you about, coach from Wake Forest in his first year with the Cowboys. And of course, Don talked earlier at the beginning of the game with Ermel Allen, who works high up in the stadium, communicating with the Dallas bench, as of course do the other coaches. The defensive job produced by Ernie Stotner of the Dallas Cowboys, and for Ron Earhart, well, what can we tell you? He's seen his face over the night. It's been a very frustrating first three games of the 81 season. On second down, the handoff is to Jones. He almost could have scored there. He got tripped up. He made that one step right over that line where that initial action occurred. He got walked in. This time, the Patriots, with one timeout, choose not to stop the clock. letting the seconds tick away. The whole thing's academic. I don't know why they didn't want to stop it anymore. And Danny White is going to be going to 
call timeout. Actually, he used all the seconds on his 30-second clock, and with one second left, used his timeout. Now he can start the clock again with another play from scrimmage. Good call. I think something happened, though, Frank. I think he uh, didn't like what he saw out there. Oh, the Mets did it again. The magic is real, and it's back. Four to three over the Bucks. San Diego leading the Reds, still in the thick of things in the National League West. One to nothing in the sixth. Danny Wyatt over talking with Tom Landry. As we told you in his 22nd year, trailing only George Hallis now in Curly Lambeau in number of victories. As we look at you know that four scores. Right, that Philadelphia Montreal game may be one of the more remarkable baseball games yet played. What is the longest one? Weren't the Mets involved? Houston one? and the Mets back in 1968. 24, 24 innings. innings. I would have bet someone would have had an answer. No, it, well, I, we've got it right here. Oh. Yes, yes, it's here. Third down and eight. Patriots now with one timeout. wasn't a delay of the game. No, that's not a delay of game, according to the 30-second clock on the board. Dallas is in a situation right now where I don't think they're really trying to add insult to injury. They, they know they've got the game won pretty well, but at the same time, they've got to be competitive. And it just something's awfully sloppy right now. I guess that's what they called the uh, timeout for. It seemed that people were throwing things out on the field. The referee blew his whistle, so let's knock that stuff off, folks. We're going to get this thing over here in a hurry. And they put 30 seconds back on the clock for the Dallas Cowboys. One ten remaining in the game. Again. Third down long, Ron Springs. Nailed by number 85, Julius Adams. And it'll be fourth down. Fear to be a little motion out there. The flags are down, and the motion fear to be against New England. Offsides, New England. It's ending in the sloppiest possible fashion. It's kind of sad to see people peppering the field. The Red Sox remain hot, clobbering Milwaukee. Detroit stays up there over Baltimore, and Cleveland shut out the Yanks, who have suddenly lost three in a row. Oakland, Toronto postponed. Minnesota did beat Kansas City. Offside, number 55, defense, third down. And Texas defeated Seattle. California may finally win a game. Gene Mock can't believe what's happened to his angels. Third down, goal to go for Dallas following the offside penalty. We'd like to thank our stats and research man, Jerry Klein. Our spotter, we've already mentioned, from Canton, Ohio, Hall of Fame town, Steve Bazika. Jones gets a block from Springs, turns back into a lot of red shirts. And New England says we're going to call time. That will be it for New England. That's it. And it'll be fourth down. Septian is ready to go in. Yeah, Tom's going to take the three, and why not? It's the thing to do. He should try to score again. No, I don't believe he is. No? No. Hmm. Keep in mind, too, it does, is a factor, one of the factors in the tie-breaking system, the number of points down a high, well, it's way down on the list. It's... Tom is also kind of a sympathetic person. He's not going to roll it up if he can avoid it. He's leading 32-21. And there he is. Now he's in the, there, and that's, that's second the, thoughts. <laughs> that's exactly what they should do. That's the right thing to do. Out of that second thoughts, Danny White was chewing the fat with him pretty good there. Public's entitled to see every team at every moment expend its best effort, regardless even of the point scoring system. It's Charlie Waters to hold. Rafael Septien on for what appears to be a field goal attempt. 25 yards. 
Christian is hit from 26 and 28. And he hits from 25. Less than a minute. And New England will be 0-3 on a young season. Miami is 3-0. Buffalo 2-1. Baltimore 1-2. And, and we will be in Chicago next Monday night. You talk about a team in disarray. The things happening in Los Angeles have been unbelievable. And with their personnel, it's astonishing that they're one and two. But they did put a victory together over Green Bay, which can be a difficult opponent now. And maybe they'll be ready for the Bears, who put their thing together against Tampa Bay. Come from behind win yesterday on the part of the Rams over Green Bay. Good defensive effort. Pat Hayden was shaken up. We don't know the extent of his injury. Bruce Ribs being told. Jeff Rutledge came in for them through a touchdown pass, and they say that Pastorini is working out. Yep. And they say that Malavasi and Klosterman are at odds over whether or not Pastorini should be signed. Now, if we just knew who they were, huh? <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun in the Windy City. You see Danny White's stats, 24 out of 34. That's not bad. Sucked in, drills it along the ground, taken by Hasselbeck. Gets it to the 42-yard line. New England has no way of stopping the clock other than with the incompletion or stepping out of bounds. Montreal beat Steve Galton in Philadelphia. Steve may have been out, the, out of there when it finally ended. One to nothing. What a game. That's it. You already sang it done. Earlier, I can we, sing it again. We talked about Dallas's continuity of excellence. You got a glimpse a moment ago on the sidelines of Gil Brandt, and he's one of the reasons. That man, Kavanaugh, fires to Collins. Collins is taken there by number 57. That's Angelo King, who was just recently activated. He'd been cut. As a matter of fact, in training camp, Tom Landry brought him back in when Hagman was hurt because he knows the system. Gain of six, second down and four, Kavanaugh back again. Flag is down. This is Andy Johnson with 29 seconds now on the clock. Emerson Walls defensively there for Dallas. Emerson Walls, a reflection of what I was talking about in Gil Brandt. Few, if any, are better. There will be the standings in the NFC East. And in two weeks, we have Philadelphia against Atlanta in the city of brotherly love. What a game that should be. And there's the AFC. Illegal motion, number 73, offense, second down. I don't know how Schuler and Onsborg could do it, but together they work miracles. And we'll have Miami Buffalo in three weeks. So we've got quite a schedule coming up. Illegal motion, five-yard penalty. It'll be second down and nine, 29 seconds remaining in the game. Kavanaugh will be out of the shotgun. Dallas has six defensive backs in. They spread all over the field. And Guy Brown will get the interception. And Guy Brown is thinking offense. He steps out of bounds, stopping the clock. He almost got one a moment ago, if you'll remember. That one would have been for a touchdown. He has great speed. He really does. You're going to see it. Dallas was really giving him that short stuff. Kavanaugh didn't really have a lot, of pre a lot of pressure back there, but you just can't keep your eye on all of them. Trying to go to Hasselback. Guy Brown moved over from his linebacker position. And you're right, thinking offense. Wait a minute, I'm going to stop the clock. So, seven turnovers tonight for the Pats. No way you can win under those circumstances. And once again, it'll be Dallas at home out. next week against the Giants. And New England will travel to Pittsburgh. Danny White will do the little fall down. And this game will be history. Dallas remains undefeated for New England. It has all the trappings of an extremely long year. Danny White looking for someone to say nice game. He finds the man that maybe made it all possible, Roland James. <laughs> That's right. Once again, the final score, 32-21, Dallas over New England. And remember, stay tuned for ABC News Nightline. It'll be 30 minutes after the game, 11.30 on the West Coast, over most of these ABC stations. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii 
than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as a leader in sports television. Once again, 35-21, Dallas.